This might be a little bit loud. I apologize. <laughs> Because Nick told me to. Yeah. Oh, hey! Nope. Nope. Because, because why not? Why wouldn't we start off with just a little bit of a dangle clack here at the beginning of the stream? If anything's too loud, too quiet, you guys have to let me know. <clears throat> All right. Pow. There it is. Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome, man. Hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is Mother Truckin' Vlog Day. Damn right. I got a full-on action-packed vlog for you guys planned out tonight. Timestamps for anybody curious on that hashtag replay crew. Timestamps are always going to be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. My main man. I may have seen him in the chat. The problem is I see his name so many places all you know all over the internet that I just assume I go, oh, he's, he's probably in the chat. Uh, it's Jeremy V. He collects all those timestamps. It's the first pinned comment right underneath this video. We turn them into chapters across this video. It's a whole thing to navigate the vlog, but you guys are here. You guys are here on the live. You get to do no, no navigating. You just have to sit here and deal with it and take it. And that's uh, that's my favorite part. That's my favorite part is having a captive audience. I appreciate you guys. Be I see you there in the chat. I saw Ping the Routers here. I saw Tribal Buddhas here. I saw Eli. Is it Eli? Is, is it your birthday, Eli? Eli Q? I think, I think it's Eli. I'm just going to call you Eli if that's okay, Eli. If I'm way, way wrong, then please, please correct me. I, but thank you for being here, you guys. Uh, truly and honestly, the 60-watt guys here, Vicky Benji's here, Ryan, Giovanni, Addy, Tooney. There's Jeremy V. I knew I saw him somewhere. Cicero, Michelle, Cousin Barbara is here tonight. Well, like I said, you guys, welcome. Thank you for being here. Your, your, your birthday was May 6th. You missed that vlog, Ryan. You can go back and watch it. I might have sung to you. It might have. I might have sung to you. It, your name might have been in there. I don't know why, but it, it could have been. It could have been. Oh, you're, you're today. Your birthday is actually today, Eli. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well done, Eli. That's awesome. All right. Well, congratulations. You know, another year, another another. Uh, trip around the sun. It's good times. Um, I do have a full on action packed vlog for you guys planned out today. Like I said earlier, uh, of course I have a beer. We got, we have a patron brewed beer from, uh, the great Seamus up in the great white North Canada. Uh, we got a beer. We got what I've been vaping. We're going to do some assignment America. We're going to sing happy birthday. Of course, I've got some news. I've got some retro vapings. I've got some mail. We got a random liquid tasting we might, if we have time at the very end, do some getting to know Grim Green, but I don't even know. We could be running completely wrong, completely long. We could be running completely crazy long tonight. Sewer rug, I see you there. Your, your emotes, I'm sorry, you're over on Twitch. Your emotes did not show up. So let me say a few things. First thing is, I don't, I guess I'm just going to keep streaming on Twitch and YouTube until Twitch gets mad at me. They instituted a rule about multi-streaming and I and I talked about this last week and I talked about it on Twitch. If you're streaming live on the Twitch services, you may not simultaneously live stream or broadcast simulcast on any other Twitch-like service. Well, damn it, YouTube is a very Twitch-like service. And the idea that Twitch is policing me that I can't stream on YouTube and Twitch that, uh, well, you know, that bums me out. So for all intents and purposes right now, we're exclusively on Twitch. We're not though. I can't even say that with a straight face. Can't even say that with a straight face. So maybe we're going to stream on both. Maybe we're just going to stream on YouTube. If Twitch gets upset with me, like I don't want to lose my Twitchness because I was breaking a rule that I knew existed. You know what I mean? Like this is clearly a rule that exists. I don't want to, you know, I don't, obviously I don't want to upset Twitch. I'd like to keep streaming on Twitch if I could. Uh, also here's my unapology. I'm, I'm here's my unapology. I, I'm not sorry. This is an unapology. This is me doubling down. This is me not being sorry. Last week's news segment was just really long. You know, 
it was just really long and I started feeling bad about it. I started feeling a little bit guilty about it. And then I decided this morning that I'm not ever going to feel that way again because of everything that I do on YouTube, I think the news is the most important thing. This is, this is, this is news that affects you directly. This directly impacts your ability to remain smoke free. And the, uh, you know, the, uh, for lack of a better term, the attack on vaping is relentless and has been relentless. And we just keep slowly losing and losing and losing and losing and losing and losing and losing. And I'm trying to have us not lose, <laughs> you know? So I, I'm done apologizing about having a mess of news and advocacy. I don't see other people on YouTube talking about it. I don't see anybody bringing up the uh, Tobacco Harm Reduction Caucus like we're going to talk about tonight. I don't see people talking about uh, the World Health Organization and their anti-vaping stance. I just don't see it. And so I think that this is critical information. I, I'm not all about wasting time. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. I'm trying to relay like the most important critical information that I feel that, that we as vapors need to be armed with information and knowledge and science and studies and to be involved in, to be involved in, in, in saving vaping. I mean, quite literally saving vaping. So, so I'm unsorry. This is my unapology. Last week was a long news and advocacy. I'll try to keep it shorter tonight. But you never know. I might just go off on some rants, and uh, we might just get we might just get mad. You know, we might just get mad at, mad at the world. And I'm not trying to. I don't want to rage bait anybody. I'm not trying to get you riled up and angry, but I am trying to get you riled up and and active a little bit. You know, and, and just having this information, even if you don't use it, even if you're not active on social media or actively getting into discussions with people or not actively calling legislators and lawmakers. It's still important information to have for us as a vape community. Hashtag unsorry. So that's where we're at. So there's going to be some vape news tonight. There's going to be some Star Wars giveaways, you guys. Uh, enough is enough. I feel like I've waited a really long time to do this. I meant to do this on May the 4th. That's a plan on doing a, a big a big Star Wars giveaway live stream. But tonight, we're going to do two contests. That's right. It's a contest. It's going to require a little bit of critical thinking skills, maybe some memorization skills. I'm not sure. We'll get there when we get there. But I have two. two oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll tell you the whole story of, of the Star Wars collection, why I'm getting rid of it, and, and what is included. Because... It's so dope. It's so dope. It's so dope. Yeah, daily, dude. Daily I get on social media. Daily I get on Twitter and you just see you just see someone who works for like the Maryland Department of Public Health and they posted out a tweet that's like actually vaping is really bad for you. Did you know that it doesn't help you quit smoking and there's a crolian in it? Daily People are throwing out anti-vaping tweets, anti-vaping articles, anti-vaping misinformation, anti-vaping disinformation, playing a little bit fast and loose with some science and some uh, data points daily. If they're out there daily, I should be out there daily. If they're out there daily, we should be out there daily. I, I'm, I, I hate, I, I just, I don't know. It's been really affecting me lately, I guess. Maybe I need to take a break. <laughs> Maybe I need to take a break from all social media, especially Twitter, but I just see it constantly and you can't reply to every single person. I just don't have the energy sometimes. I'm like, nah, that person's just going to be wrong and I don't even care. And they're just going to keep being wrong on Twitter. And I'm not going to take my time to try to correct this person's mind because with, you know, what happens if I do, oh, one person, you know, one person may have changed their mind. I guess that's all that really matters. Isn't it? Anyway, anyway, anyway. So yeah, we're going to do some Star Wars giveaways. I didn't write that down in the schedule though, but we'll put one, uh, 
maybe here right before birthdays, right? And then maybe one right here after the vape mail. After the retro vaping, after the vape mail, we'll do another Star Wars contest. Get ready to get your, uh, get ready to get those emails out. You guys remember email? You're gonna need to enter via email. Don't worry, everything will be explained. Everything will be explained. But uh, here you go, with that out of the way, Let's just get into this. Oh yeah, YouTube music sucks. I don't know why I wrote this down. I just wanted to be angry at YouTube. Being a content creator is stupid and trying to find any sort of music or sound effects on the internet that you can use on YouTube without getting copyright strikes is impossible. It's ridiculous, it's impossible. Even YouTube has their own like audio music library, right? And so I thought, oh, this is great. YouTube's providing music and I can use it on YouTube videos, right? I can use it on YouTube videos, right? No, the majority of the music in the YouTube library has this little red dollar sign next to it. And when you mouse over it, it says, if you use this song in a video, it won't show up on YouTube. If you use this song in a video, you'll be in a, you know, uneligible to be monetized. If you use this song on YouTube, we're just gonna delete your video. And I'm thinking, why does it exist then? Why does YouTube have this excessive creator music library if we can't use anything? And now you have to add revenue share with people, with the, you know, with the people that created the music, which sure, I guess they should get paid too, right? They're creating music. It's just my nightmare. It's my daily nightmare. And that's why we don't have any like cool music. <laughs> that's why we don't have any cool music for the uh, contest time, the contest portion, the giveaway portion. You know, I try to make it like a free, not a free, I try to make it like a, you know, an entertaining thing. And in silence, giveaways are just boring, except for the people that are entering and winning. So I guess that's good. Hey, that's enough yammering for now. What do you think about that? I think the first thing we should do, our first act of the vlog tonight is to get some beer inside of us. Well, would you look at this little, you know, glistening sweaty bottle of beer came out of the fridge about a half hour ago. Just waiting to get it to temp and then we're going to drink this like literally right now. Literally right now. This came from The Great Seamus. This is a homebrew. I'll, I'll tell you all about this beer. And yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's places where you can get music, like you can subscribe to certain other third-party websites and they'll say, oh, this music you can use on YouTube. And I go, oh, okay, that's great. What I'm looking for isn't just, you know, like uh, just a background music. It's not just background music, it's specific types of music. Like during a giveaway, I want there to be like tense game show style music. Try finding tense game show style music, even that you can buy on the internet that will that you could use in a YouTube video. Even the Envato Marketplace, which I'm a member of, and I pay monthly fees there, I can't download anything. I can't download their fonts. They're like, oh, you can download this font, you just can't use it anywhere on the web or in print or in template or in a video or on Twitter or on anything. Oh, sure, you can download this music, but you can't use it on YouTube or Twitch or streaming or for videos or on anything, actually. Oh, okay. Appreciate that. They even warn you. They say, if you download this music on YouTube and you put it on YouTube, you'll probably get a copyright strike. And, and they're so aware of these copyright strikes that they're like, here's how you can download the certificate and send them our email so we can verify that you're allowed to use this music. And I go, oh, perfect, yeah, spiffy. That helps out during the in-between time when my video's not monetized. Like this process takes time. Anyway, I'm done ranting. I'm done ranting about YouTube. I'm done ranting about music. Being a content creator used to be uh, a lot easier. Not a lot easier, but yeah, a lot easier. It seems like people were just creating stuff just to create stuff. And now it's like, wow, if 
you want to use this picture, you're going to have to buy the picture and then pay the copyright royalty when you show it. If you want to use this music, you're going to have to buy the music and then share your ad revenue with the creator. Yeah, the Jeopardy music is not public domain, Gunny. Can you believe it? <laughs> Can you believe it? Anyway, that's an. I'm going to cross this off. I shouldn't have written down YouTube music sucks. That's just something I shouldn't have done. I was just mad, you know, it was the heat of the moment. I thought, wow, YouTube music does suck. But let's turn our attention to something much more fun. This is a beer. Yeah, this is a homebrew beer, baby. Homebrew beer. The Great Seamus says it's an American style porter, so less body than your English porter. It's a 6.2%, pretty of effervescent, so be careful opening it up. Great. I already have a fear of beer bottles. Uh, it's bottle conditioned, so there should be some tasty sediment at the bottom. Overall, not too complex, slightly bitter, with roasted chocolate coming in uh, and molasses going out. The head itself has some nice sweetness. You'll get my full, you'll get my full review of this, Seamus. And I'm going to be careful opening it, as careful as I can be with like a Grosch style bottle like this. All right. We survived. We survived. Mission accomplished. I'm going to be pouring this into uh, one of the oldest glasses that I own. It's just a fuck yeah glass. I got this from a subscriber way back. This was like in 2012. I got this from a subscriber. So we're pouring. Ooh, look at that. It's darker. It's darker than I was expecting it to be, Seamus. It's a pretty dark little beer there. Let's take it to there. Easy now. Easy now. Oh, that looks nice. That looks delightful. That looks great. American style porter. All right. So I'm expecting some effervescence. I'm expecting some porterness to it. I'm expecting some sweetness from the head. Anyway, this came as a gift from uh, the great Seamus. Cheers. Hope you got something delicious next to you. Yeah, that's delightful. It's a little alcohol forward. I can taste that like 6% alcohol. But I did get some nice uh, sweetness from, from the head there, from the foam. Yeah, a little bit of sweetness. Uh, it's real rich. It's cleaner than I thought it was going to be on the drink down. doesn't linger very much. There is some sweetness involved in this. There, There is that like slight toasty you know, toasty chocolate, like to I don't even want to say chocolate because chocolate makes me think of like Hershey chocolate. And if I want to sound fancy, I would say something like toasted cacao nibs, but it does kind of have like a toasted chocolate, toasted cacao kind of situation going on here. How the hell do you even know what you're watching? There we go. Now it's official. Now it's the vlog. I don't know where the emotes are. They should be uh, appearing. Stum. I saw them happen, but uh, I don't see them. Let's throw some dolphins up here as a test. Dolphins? Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, real good. A little molasses-y, like you, like you said, Seamus. Like toasty chocolate. It does have quite a bit of body to it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It's like an English-style porter. It's It's got some body to it. That's freaking ass delightful. Um, now, Seamus recommended a, a pistachio pairing. So I ran to the living room to get my uh, my pistachio, Atlantis GT tank. Let's, this is a Seamus recommended pairing. So let's try it. Yeah, dude. Holy shit, that's delightful. That's freaking delightful, Seamus. They complement each other really well. In fact, the pistachio seems to sweeten up this beer a little bit, kind of bring some of that sweetness to the front. Delightful. Holy cow, that's delightful. And the best part is we're not even close to being done yet. Look at this. We can just top this on up. Might even be able to top this up a third time. Might even be able to top this up a third time. You know how it's going to be a good vlog? 
Look at right there. That's how you know, that's how you know it's going to be a good vlog. Big 6% beer. Ugh. Sorry. Sorry. That was gross. That was a little too much. Ugh. That's a little bit too much. Sorry. This is delightful. Yep. Look at that beer mustache. Um, this is just uh, for so someone asked in the chat. That just I just saw it go by. The Boxer. This is the Boxer Classic DNA 100C Single 21 700. Uh, it's one of my favorite banger mods. I just love it. I love the big clicky fire button. I love the hand feel of it. That like teardrop shape. Rules. Just rules. It doesn't gent though. I would I, I would not say that it gents. Some other things on my desk do gent, but that's the one that I don't picture genting. Th this, like, this gents, for sure. Stubby probably gents. The Atlas probably gents. The Karasu doesn't, but the, the Empire, like, kind of gents. Like, it's kind of into gent, but not really. Uh, the burp taste, I gotta say... Tastes like a nasty, nasty ass burp. All right, pour it all in. Get all that sediment off the bottom. Radical. And now, like, look, we already had a beer tasting, but it's like second beer, you know? It's not like second beer. It is second beer. It's just a giant second beer. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, now that we got a beer coursing through our veins, uh, let's quickly check in on those uh, super chats. Is that a thing? Yeah. We're going to be running long, so no full bumpers tonight. Zero full bumpers tonight. Oh, dang. There, there, We got some super chats already. Hey, Slater. Bah, appreciate that. This is the way. This is the way. Thank you, Slater. I appreciate that. Odd comedy, thank you for that gold star. I very appreciate that. Uh, Patrick Conquest Pants, um, sorry for being weird. It's my first time being alive. I'm back on planet Earth and feeling great. Made spicy chicken Alfredo. Spicy chicken Alfredo? That sounds, that sounds perfect, Patrick Conquest Pants. I really love that for you. And don't ever apologize for being weird. It's literally all our first time being alive. I say that too often. We're, we're all winging it, man. We're all winging it. Dave Davis. Hey, did you fix the smoke alarm? Shout out to Chud Ju and Justin. Hashtag Michigan Vapors. Yeah, fuck yeah, Michigan Vapors. Um, I fixed the smoke alarm in that I took it off the wall and took it out of my office. It is actually back in my office, but I don't know if I'm going to get too cloud chasey. We'll try, we, the vlog doesn't usually get too cloud chasey, but on a build stream... With Bogan, when you're just vaping your face off and you're building series fuse Claptons, Ugh. yeah, we're, we're gonna set off that smoke detector. We're gonna set off that smoke detector hard. Shout out to Chud in the chat, Ohmslaw. Oh, maggots! Yeah, maggots. They're falling like rain, Ohmslaw. I hope that maggots. It, it become, I want to try to get Maggots to be Guar's number one song on Spotify just by suggesting it to people. Just by making Maggots an inside joke will just get people listening to it. That can only be a good thing. You know, more Guar in the world is what we need. Bradley Lemons. Uh, that's very gracious of you. He says, I disregard everything you told me in your last live. Okay. I skipped right past the MV bridge and went for the A temporal. Uh, not a mistake. No, not a mistake. The... Uh, Here's the thing about the A temporal. It vapes rad. It, it vapes undeniably good. It's got big, smooth, swooshy, like restricted lung airflow. The stainless steel mesh in there acts as a wick. It really, really works. You do need to use the own special A temporal Boro panels if you're going to use it on a billet box. But, dude, it, you made a good choice. Good choice. A temporal slaps. I think you'll like it. Ask around in the chat. There's a there's a few people with atemporals in here. I know for sure. I know for sure. And then we got Chud. Chud. Shout out to Dave Davis and Justin Mead. Thank you, Nick, for providing me thousands of hours worth of entertainment. Also, the Cool Kids Club rocks. Shit, yeah, it does. I'll use that opportunity to pimp the Cool Kids Club. Hey, I have a link. 
in the description for my Patreon. If you want to join it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. There's, there's no pressure there. What you do get is access to a super secret Instagram uh, streaming only account. We stream on Mondays, coffee Mondays, Monday coffee stream. We stream on Wednesdays. It's the Wednesday boosh box stream. Sometimes we get in discussion about shoes and sandwiches and cereal. I think the last big discussion on Wednesday was who had the best fast food fries? Burger King, fight me. It's Burger King, hands down. Um, you also get access to our Discord server uh, where we hang out and be generally awesome. And then we do like Thursday night uh, post vlog, um, Discord hangs. It's hella good times. Hella good times. I'll have a link in the description. And then, and then, oh, the great Seamus. Uh, welcome once again into the vaping pit, my friends. We're so glad you could attend. Don't smoke, you'll die. Smoke, you'll die. Is this an, are you making an ELP reference? Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. Stand behind the glass, it's a real blade of grass. Be careful as you pass, move along, move along. Come inside, the show's about to start. Guaranteed to blow your head apart. ELP. If you're telling me that's an ELP, Seamus, ELP reference, Seamus, you just, you gained some like street cred in my book. Ray Buildable, uh, yo, yo, and love you. Obviously, Gorgo comes and you must die. <laughs> the death he brings you, fallen worship tyrant king you, Gorgor. Yeah. Uh, Gorgor, also shout out to the cool kids, Ray Buildable, shouting all of them out, every single one of them. Um, Gorgor used to be on my skiing playlist when I would go skiing with headphones on. Uh, I, for some reason, Gorgor was like one of my favorite skiing songs. It just made me ski like extra aggressively or something, you know, on, on my blue, on my blue groomers, <laughs> you know, Gorgor, Gorgor comes in sirens, whale, thunderous gnashing, <laughs> Gorgo comes and you must die. He swats the stealth down from the sky. Did you know that, right? Uh, Vicky Benji, appreciate you, Vicky Benji. One of the reasons I love you is because you bring us the news and advocacy, which is so important for all of us. Oh, thank you so much. You help so much. I, tr you know, I try my best. It's really, you know, if there's a hill I'm gonna die on, it's not uh, RDAs or RTAs or sub tanks or series versus parallel or sweetener in your liquid or no sweetener in your liquid or what type of wire makes the best type of coil or what type of coil creates the best kind of vape or wicking an RDTA or stainless steel mesh or stainless steel cables or pods or mesh pods or disposables. I'm not going to die on any of those hills, but the one hill I will die on is that vaping as a whole is going to change the world and I'm going to do literally everything I can to help it because I've already seen it change the world. I, I, I mean, the, thou, thousands, I mean, thousands of people I've spoken to looked in the eye and shook their hand and they said, I quit smoking. I quit smoking because of this. I quit smoking because I got this, this, and this. I quit smoking when I found this liquid. Vaping helped me quit smoking. Vape me helped me quit smoking. I know it's going to change the world and I'm just going to do everything I can to help it, you know? Appreciate you, Vicky. Uh, we, we got Jennings over here. That's very gracious of you, Jennings. That's crazy. Uh, I watched your video on the Smock Nova 5. After watching it, I decided to stop smoking cigarettes and picked one up. Definitely a learning curve, but I'm excited to transition to an alternative. So for that, thank you. Pew, 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 pew. I wish I had some like really celebration music. I don't. All we have is this. But yeah, shit, yeah, that's amazing. I I, I love that. Uh, I hope you dig the Smock Novo 5. I, I hope you do. It's a good one. That makes me so happy, Jennings. So tremendously happy. And look, I'll tell you this. Everybody in this chat, everybody who watches this YouTube, awesome people. I mean, just straight up awesome people. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask questions or, or get advice from me, from anybody. Like everybody would be willing to help. I, I've never seen a more helpful group of people than I have seen in vapors and vaping because everybody has that little bit of like, like slightly helpful knowledge. And if it's, if it's not helpful, it's still, you know, it's still kind of helpful. 
If you're, if you're thinking, oh, why am I getting bad flavor on this XYZ RDA? There'll be 10 people with their own opinion of like, well, did you put the coils low? Did you put the coils high? How much cotton did you use? What did you have, you know, have your airflow set at? They just want to be helpful, <laughs> you know, because most of us have been through it before. Most of us have been through it. Fishy, my fishy. Uh, no need to apologize. We know the news is important. The news helps us with the information. You do whatever you need to do. I know for myself, I'll be right next to you. I mean, fishy. Uh, I, I've never questioned fishy having my back ever in a thousand years. Never fishy. I appreciate you, bro. Happy to see you here tonight. Mallory Gates, that's very gracious of you. I love the news and advocacy bits. All of this good info gives me more ammo I can use on Twitter. Uh, maybe that can be, uh, the yeah, more that that can be put out, the better. Yeah, dude, absolutely. And shout out to Mallory for whipping up a little graph that I might use. I have some questions about it, but it's, it's a good little pie chart, Mallory. It's great, great. New Wave Dave. New Wave Dave, New Wave Dave. Got my sweatband on, rage sweat away. You know, I'm trying not to do any rage sweat tonight. There was too much rage sweat last week. I'm trying to do much less rage sweat tonight. Much less. But I can make no promises, New Wave Dave. So it's a damn good thing you got that sweat band on. Just don't let your cat steal it. Anthony Ramella. Anthony Ramella. Anthony Ramella. He saw Star Wars in the theater in 1978. He says, I saw Star Wars in the theater in 1978 when I was a kid, changed my life forever, made me who I am today. I also trained my son in the ways of the forest. Yes, uh, I don't want your collection. I just felt like sharing much love, vape fam. Anthony, there might be some things in here that you want. You, you, you might want one of the things we're giving away tonight. These are big ticket items we're giving away tonight. I mean, you're, you, you appear to be a Star Wars fan. We got 70, 70 or I'm sorry, 67% click-through rate of, ah, uh, yes, I Star Wars in the poll chat. 14% of you said, sometimes when I'm forced, and I think that's funny. Uh, Censor Yetkin, uh, hi from Scotland, lots of love. Oh, hello to Scotland. Hello to Scotland. Uh, I'll have you know that I am a card-carrying member of Clan Buchanan. That's right, uh, Clan Buchanan, I visit the tent at the Highland Games every time and I find my name and I go, yep, there it is, Clan Buchanan. So big love to you, Scotland. Someday I'm gonna get there, <laughs> someday. Bird dog, uh, hey Nick, what's your knowledge on Vapor's Tongue? This is an excellent question. In fact, this is where I'm gonna end the Super Chats just for right now so we can move forward just a little bit in the vlog. But he, uh, Bird dog says, what's your knowledge on Vapor's Tongue? My experience with Vapor's Tongue is this, this, thusly, thus, thisly. It's a real thing. It's a thing. Uh, vapor's Tongue, I believe, is just your olfactory in your brain that senses taste just getting overwhelmed, like completely and thoroughly overwhelmed. And it happens to me if I use one liquid for way too long. If I use one liquid for way too long or there's just some certain liquids I guess, that will kind of give me that olfactory, uh, uh, overwhelmed uh, sensation where things don't like start tasting right. And you go, why does my juice taste like this? It shouldn't normally taste like that. I'm, you know, I'm getting not much flavor from it. I find the best thing to do is to either A, vape something with uh, that's really iced out, culotta, menthol, something like that to sort of clear, clear the senses or just stop, just put your vape down and like, don't touch it for like two hours. Yeah, don't touch it for like two hours. Drink coffee, that's a good one. Switch juice, yeah. To, to overcome sensory overload, uh, smelling coffee is a good uh, whew, sort of uh, clear out your sensory overload situation. Smelling coffee, yeah. Try to switch your liquid up as much as you can or if you notice it happening more often than not. High fives, there it is. Let's have some beer. This is damn hell ass good beer. This is a damn hell ass good beer. Damn hell ass good beer. Um, all right, so there's more Super Chats. Uh, we're gonna start off, we'll be back. Okay, we're officially having a baby. Queen Honey Bunny, shout out to my new grandbaby. Hell yeah. 
Grandbaby Honey Bunny. I love it. There's a fist bump for the unborn Grand Honey Bunny. I love the crap out of that. Appreciate you, Queen Honey Bunny. We might as well just finish off these super chats since we're right here. Jeremy M. Yo, yo, to ya. Let me be the first to say yo, yo, to ya. My wife, Sa my wife, Sarah, will be smoke free one year tomorrow. Sarah, 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 Sarah. That rules. Oh, that rules. Yeah, the, oh, that rules. You know, when you when you when I first switched, it was like, you know, I I went a few weeks and then I had to buy cigarettes again, and then I went to dual using, and dual using is what really pushed me over the edge to stop smoking cigarettes because every time I'd hit my little vape, you know, back then had the worst the worst vapes on earth, but I'd hit my little vape and I'd go, oh, that's nice, and then I hit my cigarette and I go. Oh God, why is that so terrible? But I'd still smoke cigarettes and then go inside and vape and I'd go outside and smoke cigarettes. And eventually I, I didn't even want to go back outside to, to have a cigarette anymore. I just went straight for my vapes. And you know, the, the, y people have, everybody has a different path. And the first week is difficult. The first month is difficult. But before you know it, dude, it's going to be two years. It's going to be three years. It's going to be four years. It just adds up and it adds up quick. Just adds up and it adds up quick and get and vaping just becomes easier and easier and easier, easier and easier and easier. You'll get into a little groove. You'll get a product you like. You'll get, you know, you'll, you'll DIY your own liquid or something. You know, you'll find your all day vape. I just, you know, Jeremy M, your wife has such a journey ahead of her that uh, it's an exciting journey. It's an exciting journey. Uh, odd comedy. Let's keep going. Why not? Odd comedy. Uh, odd comedy says you, Rip, Bogan, and Mountain Vapor slash Ryan Hall have been the driving force with information to help me quit smoking. Can't even touch a cig anymore. Yeah. Good. That's good. I love that. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. If there's one thing I'm going to do on YouTube, it's be your cheerleader. You want to quit smoking? I will be your cheerleader. I'll give you all the, the best advice that I possibly can, but mostly I'm just going to cheer you on, you know? I, I used to love, love Mountain Vapor's Ryan Hall. And in fact, he doesn't need it, but I'd like to give a shout out to Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall was like suddenly the biggest vape YouTuber that existed, and he was amazing, and he had amazing videos, and he was so charming to listen to and just so charming to watch, and I wanted to watch all of his videos, and he had his dudes behind him who were always there and helping out at Mountain Vapors, and he did an amazing job, and then Ryan Hall suddenly pivoted to being like a weatherman on YouTube. He's killing it. He's killing it. It's unbelievable what he has accomplished, not just in like growing his YouTube, but like literally helping people on a, on a big level when these big storms roll through these certain areas, he's giving out good advice about where it is, where it's going, get out of the way, get out of the storm, go to a shelter. Here's where the shelters are. It's unbelievable. So I love Ryan Hall. Shout out to Ryan Hall. I love what he's doing now. Let's keep going. Is this an oops all super chats? Might be. Frank, it's very gracious of you. Yo, yo, Nick, never stop doing what you do. Help the vape community so much. Love you, bro. Keep up the good work. Frank, I love you, man. I appreciate you being here. And uh, I don't know if I have it in me to stop. There's days like today where I feel defeated. I feel a little bit defeated. I feel a little bit deflated. I feel a little bit like the wind has been taken out of my sails a little bit. You know, it, it's just you know, trigger stacking, right? It's like one thing bothers you and, and I don't let it go. And so that little thing's kind of bothering me. And then it's like, well, now this is bothering me and this little thing is bothering me. And now I have two little things bothering me. And then, oh, would you look at that? There's like a third, just tiny little thing that's bothering me. And now you got this trifecta of three tiny little things bothering me. And oh, would you look at that? Four and five things bothering me. Not big things, just four, five small little things that are all just kind of annoying you at the same time. It's enough, to, uh, it's enough to make you want to throw your arms up and quit and just say, fuck it, go smoke cigarettes. I don't give a shit anymore. I, but I, can't, I, I physically literally can't do that. Not even in a joking manner. It didn't even feel right. 
But it's like, okay, you win, World Health Organization. Let's all just smoke cigarettes. Is that what you want? Is that what you're after? You just want us all smoking combustible cigarettes all the time? Ugh. It's frustrating. Frustrating, Frank, to say the least. But we got SVK vapes, bruh. Uh, listen to Cancer Bats. And this was in the lyrics. Hold up. Wait up. I got a weird question trying to understand one of life's strange lessons. Wave crash and things cause rocks to roll. But I, but I know that I know. But give Nick 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Give Nick 20 bucks. I can't, why can't I place that Cancer Bat song? I consider myself quite the Cancer Bats fan. Can't place that song. But I love SVK Vapes that you're listening to the Cancer Bats. You know, it's good stuff. J just uh, start at Birthing the Giant and then move through their discography. It only gets better, you know? Appreciate you. Sally S says, uh, quit smoking for five years, then went back twice. Yep. Quit five years ago, now I vape. Everybody's journey is different. And Sally S. just had a different journey. She quit smoking for five years and went back to smoking twice. Then five years ago, and now Sally S. just vapes. I love it. I love it. I love hearing that. And honestly, everybody's, literally everybody's story is unique. You'll probably find mountains of people that got their first e-cig and we're like, oh yeah, I bought, I bought a Cali burn and I quit that day and I never looked back. And I went, wow, that's crazy that that was so easy for you. You know, everybody has a different path. And uh, if you're a person watching and you're like, I still smoke a few cigarettes, but I try to vape most of the time, you're doing a great job. That's all, that's all anyone can ever ask of you. Smoke, smoke less, vape more, and everybody's path is different. Everybody's got a different story. Vicky, one more time from Vicky. Uh, me and my dad went to go see Star Wars in 77. I was 10 years old. He was overwhelmed by Dolby Stereo, which was new and loud back then. I was okay with it. Yeah, Dolby. I still, if and when I go to the movie theaters, I seek out like Dolby theaters. There's a Dolby theater in, uh, in Hollywood area that just the sound will just explode your brains you know you'll just be bleeding out of your ear holes it's so fantastic dolby stereo <laughs> i love that vicky benji i literally love that matt matt mccurry uh magneto mod with a russian loaded up with fluid whoa i just wanted to put you in that headspace briefly love you homes holy shit yeah a Magneto mod with a Russian 91 on top, loaded up with radiator fluid. But dude, busting. That's that's the most throwbacky like setup of all time. If there was a way to vape radiator fluid now, I would do it. I would try to track some down and find it. Fluid was uh awful. Awful. The fluid was terrible, the boba's bounty was terrible. It was like the two most popular juices of all time back in the day. And I couldn't stand either of them. Yeah, what are you going to do, Matt? Thanks for putting me in that headspace. I appreciate it. Marcus, that's gracious of you. I was never addicted to cigarettes. Occasionally smoked when drinking. Been vaping since 2015. Anyone has a problem with that can suck it hard. Hey, love you. Hey, love you, Marcus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what you say to people that have a problem with that? Mind your own business. <laughs> Mind your own business my business, not yours. What I do is of no concern to you, <laughs> of literally no concern to you. I'm going to drink this beer. Nobody can say shit. Mind your own business. I'm bringing that back. We need to tell people to mind their own business these days. Hey, mind your own business. <laughs> SVK vapes, last one. Almost forgot Monday, I became 12 years smoke-free much love to you and thank you so much. Uh, thank you and much love to the chat. It's great to be a cool kid. It's Look, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty great to be a cool kid, isn't it? <laughs> it's a pretty rad group of people. I'm not going to lie. And SVK, 12 years. I mean, congratulations, dude. Uh, here's my only question is, did you ever envision a time, you know, when you were smoking cigarettes that you would have been smoke free for 12 years because I sure as hell didn't. I sure as hell 
never pictured myself not smoking cigarettes. It was just attached to me. I always had a pack of cigarettes. I was like the smoking guy. I was like the smoking friend. And the Swamp Donkey, when I was playing in the Swamp Donkey, dude, we all just smoked. We would, that's how we wrote songs. We would go in Davy's garage and drink Captain Morgan and smoke a carton of cigarettes. You know, and that's it. <laughs> we go, yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> a real heavy riff. <laughs> that's what we did. It was like cigarettes were just part of my life. I didn't think I was ever going to not smoke cigarettes. End Divine is here. Watch out. Watch out, End Divine. You guys don't know you're in the presence of greatness. Nick Divine is a legendary coil art creator. Legendary coil art creator. Everyone go subscribe to End Divine 83 on, uh, on the YouTube there. I'm not giving away my neck tattoo, unfortunately, Nick, unless you got a cheese grater with you. And then we can get this off me. <laughs> and then Legion's Lair is here. Oh, holy shit. Legion, good to see you, Legion. Good to see you, buddy. Okay, uh, now that we're, we've wasted a thousand hours of time, let's move a little bit forward into the vlog. And uh, here is just a few things I've been vaping. And in order to do this, it's time to go out to the living room. Full bumper. Well, you know, we did it. We made it out to the living room again to talk about the things that I've actually been vaping. I also want to clarify that, the, I think I've said this before, but these this stuff just doesn't just live out here. At the beginning of every week, usually on a Monday, usually on a Sunday night, everything from my side table will get collected and go back into my office so that all my vape gear is in my office. And then over the course of the week, the things that trickle out of the office make it out here where they get vaped the most i just i felt like there was some confusion like these things don't just live out here now would be a good time to introduce the idea of the travelers as well because there are some vapes that i like just so much that they're called they're what i call the travelers where they travel back and forth on a daily basis between the living room and the office. I feel like the first thing that always makes it out here and has become quite a bit of a traveler, it's the Karasu number 11 uh, from Moo Mods, Tripod 2 on top. We got a whistle tip from the great Seamus up there in the, the great Canada. This is delicious, uncommon. I wanna say it's number four. Someday I'm gonna memorize the numbers of the uncommon line that I'm releasing with super good, but I think it's number four. It's the... Uh, lemon raspberry like cream puff this is like this is like a perfect setup this has the uncommon tobacco in it this is a setup that just keeps making it out here week after week it's the Ogvape v200 with just a type 2 on top but it's just been so enjoyable 0.2 dual coil at a much lower wattage like 45 watts. I get some good restriction. I get flavor for days. Just been super consistent. Uh, here's something. Can't even show you anything. So top secret, I can't even show it to you at the moment. But I'll give you a hint. It's a squonk with a brand new Twisted Messes RDA on top. I think this has just been in such heavy rotation because of the pistachio on the inside, but it's the Boxer Classic DNA 100C Aspire Atlantis GT subtank on top that I actually never did a review for. It's dumb. It's dumb and I have a million reasons why I didn't do a review for it, but I, I shot a review for it and then I lost the footage and then I edited and then I found the footage and then I edited it. And then I put together an ending for it. And then I ended up losing the whole video. I deleted it by accident. It really bums me out because this is a top tier sub tank in my opinion. And this just came out here last night because I can't seem to get it out of my hand. I did a little uh, Grogan vaping bogan build sesh sesh. 
like just last night on this here YouTube channel. You can go check it out if you want to. It was a good times. But I built some Series Fuse Claptons again, and I installed them in the QP Fatality RTA on top of the Series Overkill mod. Baked pistachios on the inside. The resistance came out perfect. It's above a 0.3. It ended up being like a 0.34, 0.35, which on fresh series is great for me. I wanted to do an RTA on top of the series because dripping with that atomizer with the Valhalla, I was it was all I did was drip. All you do is drip. It's like you drip two toots maximum, you're dripping again. Two toots, drip, two toots, drip. It got to be a little bit much, so. Now I'm just cranking through liquid in this Fatality RTA. It's holding up awesome though, flawlessly, perfectly. The build deck is huge and perfect. I was able to fit a three millimeter 10 wrap on the inside of the Fatality. I sometimes forget how good of an RTA this is. Two pods have been consistently making it out here. One of them is the Cross 3 Nano. I just love the shit out of it. And the other is the Calmia, which isn't like objectively a good pod. I mean, it is an objectively good pod. It vapes amazing, but it's one of those things where I like it. I actually love it, but I feel like, uh, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like the majority of people won't like it, but the Calmia just rules in my world. And then the true travelers, the things that have been going back and forth on a daily basis between out here and my office, it's just these two guys. You know, I, I really like my mouth to lung. You know, as an ex-cigarette smoker, I desire a really good mouth to lung. And these two mouth to lungs have been really just, for a lack of a better term, knocking my dick in the dirt. It's the it's the Loss Vape. It's the Orion 2. I have a fresh coil ahead in here as of a week ago. It's bright and crispy and flavorful. I do like a combination restricted lung mouth to lung with this type of airflow. Traveler. It's a it's a pocket device. And lastly, if I had to pick one singular thing that I have truly, truly been vaping and cranking away on, it's this. This I set this up completely by accident and it turned out to be like my favorite thing of all time. I believe it's Cherry Pine Mods. There are expensive Cherry Pine Mods. For some reason, I don't think this is the same Cherry Pine Mods. The person that made this is a patron or was a patron for a while. It's just a 3D printed mechanical single 18650 Boro. It's stupid lightweight. Honestly, the hand feel of it reminds me of a disposable. The size of it reminds me of a disposable, except I can rebuild this coil with wire for literally pennies every week if I wanted to. Steam shell, one millimeter, mouth to lung, 12 milligram cheese your guava jelly, single 18650. It's so lightweight and palmable and pocketable. This is like, this is it. This is my, this is my favorite vape of the week, I think. Flavor on the steam shell slaps. Single 18650 with a mouth to lung, high resistant coil slaps. This is a mechanical. So if in a dream world, I'd like to turn up the wattage a little bit, but as it stands, it's a mechanical and it feels a little bit old school in that I kind of have to take a little bit of a primer puff before I really get to the good toot, you know, like I used to have to do on really old K funds. It's amazing. This is, this is an amazing vape, but I kind of wish I didn't put the peak Boro in here, but honestly, don't care. Kind of doesn't bother me at all. I even got the orange camo, uh, you know, QP Designs 18650 kind of hanging out on the end here. I got to be a little bit careful with it because it has that exposed battery, but this is the Supreme Traveler. It's been going everywhere with me. Pocket, couch, office, doesn't matter. I love it. This is my banger of the week. I've never done a banger of the week before, but that's a banger of the week. I'm sure I have some desk warriors in the office, but look, I'm going to let desk guy tell you about that. Hey, uh, yeah, desk guy back here today. <laughs> I do have some desk warriors. What ends up on my desk is, well, we'll go through it. It's the Odin 2 with the uh, legal RDA. 
out of Indonesia. Vape Zoo right there. We got some Amertoriums Raspberry Ripple in this. Ugh. Stop it. This liquid rules. Uh, this RDA rules. This whole setup. This is one of those setups where everything just came together so nicely. It's like I got great coils and a great RDA on top of a great dual battery mod with like one of my favorite liquids on the inside. Get out of here. Damn. Damn hell ass good. Uh, you know, I got an empire going. It's whatever. It's the matte black empire with a squirida on top and it has a clear door on the back and the other green camo 21700 there from uh, the QP battery wraps. I said on Instagram that this is a one of one and it is. It's a one of one and it may never get released because let me explain why. The doors on the empire, where's my other empire? The doors on the empire are aluminum and in certain spots, very thin. It's a very thin, thin little door that goes on there. The, the clear plastic has to be equally thin and accommodate the same tolerances. And it just makes it like a bendy piece of rubber. And it makes it so thin that it's a little bit of like a bitch to get in and out. It's not impossible, but it's kind of a pain. And I don't want people to buy this, you know, if they buy a clear door and they're like, oh, I can't put it on my empire. I'm like, well, you know, I tried to warn you. They don't go on and off very easily, but it looks cool. Like it just looks cool having that clear door on the empire. Anyway, uh, super lunar sweet man goes in here. I just love the crap out of that. Uh, one, another desk warrior from uh the the grogan build stream yesterday last night we did a uh speed round of who can build the recoil faster and bogan did it in under four minutes it was under four minutes and mine was over five minutes so bogan is uh clearly the faster coil builder coil uh installer at the very least but I finally got mine going. It's nice to have a recoil on a, a semi-mech. This is the UL Soul Keeper that I love so much. It's a regulated button on the bottom, you know, with protections built into it. It's a regulated button. It's not mechanical. It's just damn nice. The SD push on that cloud comp there. When juice leaks out of your airflow, it's okay to just lick it. That's okay. That's been a serious desk warrior. Another serious desk warrior? The it's the stubby, but it's it's not the stubby. It's the pont on the inside. This is a mesh bridge RBA on the inside. These wick like crazy up to your mesh on the inside. And I just want to say I've been hyper pleasantly surprised with the mesh on the inside of this. I don't know if anybody was there on the build stream the, this, this last Tuesday, just on Tuesday on Twitch. But we cut up mesh. We just cut up sheets of mesh and I had to measure and trim little slices off of it to get it the right size because boros are tiny. Boros are tiny, you know? And so this deck is a tiny little deck and little tiny piece of mesh you put in there. It's like, it's it's imperceptible. It's just this tiny little piece of mesh. Put it in there, cotton. I can't explain it. This is the best experience I may have ever had with mesh. This is the best. I think this is the best experience I've ever had with mesh. Tribal Buddha, I know you were there. You're the one that's always given me guff. So, uh, yeah, I finished my build when I woke up in the morning. Yeah, yeah I need to, uh, you know, practice speed installing. That's why I haven't gone on the green room. I'm too nervous to go on the green room with frames Janklin and go up against Sean Typhon because he's just going to win. You know, he's just going to win. 
uh, you might see uh, advertisement. It says this is a, you know, this pro this video contains uh, product placements. It's this. This is the one and only. It's the coldest water bottle. They've been uh, sponsoring me in this vlog for at least two years now. I've had this water bottle for two years. It's a super insulated water bottle. Look, the, the nozzle up here isn't my favorite thing. But it works and it keeps my water super delightfully crispy cold, even in the dead of summer near the pool. The bottle will be literally too hot to touch. Ha! Ah! Cold, crispy water on the inside. I'll put a link in the description. You can buy yourself a coldest water bottle. If you do, use my code. Helps me out. Puts a little jingle in my pocket. Helps support this channel. Coldest water bottle. Stay hydrated. Also, stay beer-aided. Because hashtag beer. So, that's what I've been vaping. But we've got a few... Uh, we've got a few... Whoops. I, you ever hit the wrong button? Because I just did. One more time. I'm too loud. All right, you guys. It's Assignment Planet Globe time. This is where we get to see what you guys have been vaping. And you guys have been vaping just a whole lot of stuff. I got three pictures here from, uh, I'm going to say Ryan... It's R-U-A-N, Ruyan, Ruyan. It could be Ruyan. Ruyan, if I'm saying your name completely wrong, just tell me in the chat or tell me in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, just say, you really messed up my name. You really messed up my name. First things first, Boosh, put it on the clutch. That's the Clutch X18 with an Ocula RDA. I don't know what the device next to it is that says fatal across the top, but I really like the look of that uh, that device quite a bit. It appears to be, uh, you know, uh, some sort of 3D printing uh, happening over there. Looks good. Don't know what's on top. Uh, Royan didn't specify anything. We're just guessing literally everything. You love to see it. The black stubby with the orange empire, with the black empire, with the orange stubby, the Sith on top, the recurve on top. I don't know what's inside, but, you know, come on. The black orange, black orange combo. I don't know. Is there anything sicker than that? I'm not asking. It's a rhetorical question. The answer is no. <laughs> There's nothing sicker than that, Ryan. And then one more. Quite the Lost Vape fan as well. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Lost Vape Centauruses, the new Centaurus that I haven't even got to try yet because Lost Vape hates me now for some reason. I'm dying to try it. Couldn't tell you all the toppers on top. One of them's a reload for sure. One of them is an apocalypse for sure. One of them in the very back, that rainbow kind of look, looks like a recurve or a recurve dual. That could be a recoil. I'm not really sure. I don't know what's in the front there, but I just really like that graphic on the front of this Centaurus. It says Centaurus Lost Vape on there, and it's got like, you know, schematics and like Big Ben in the background and the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati and just my favorite things. I'm going to try to track it. I'm going to try to get with Lost Vape and get one of these. I'm going to try to get one of those things, damn it, because those look cool as hell. I, Bogan had one last night on the stream. Bogan had one last night on the stream. If you want to send me your assignment America, you can send it over to nick at grimgreen.com. Just make sure you put in your subject line, assignment planet globe. Chances are I'll see the attachment and it'll get filed and used accordingly. But if you want them to show up on the stream, you got to send them over. Uh, we got Shane. We got Shane right here. Shane sent in his daily banger and says, uh, not my only setup, uh, but one that's been paired up for a few years. I put my Asgard Mini on my Dreamer when the Asgard Mini came out. They haven't been separated since. Oh, so for like three years, four years. Shit, when did the Asgard Mini come out? 2019? Damn. Well, it's a sick setup. The Asgard Mini on top of the Dreamer, you can't go wrong. And then uh, Shane says, some Prohibition riding shotgun on the inside. Shane, thank you for sending this in. 
I, I like your setup. I even like the, uh, you know, the Pokeball in the background. It looks like a guitar pedal in the background. See, we could easily, I think we're already friends. I've never tried Raiden Shotgun. It says Golden Cookie Pudding? Golden Cookie Pudding? How do you not want to vape Golden Cookie Pudding? We are on wing watch again. My hair pokes out the sides because I need a, I'm in desperate need of a haircut. So wing watch 2023. Shit. Yeah. Shane Cole. Now I think, I think the second to the last one, it, is this the wee baby Seamus? I think this is the wee baby Seamus. If it's not the wee baby Seamus, and it's not the great Seamus, then that means there's a third Seamus in rotation, and I can't handle that. That's too many Seamuses for, for one group, you know? I, I think this is too many Seamuses. Pretty much my daily bangers, although I swap out the Zeus RTA for the Cabello pretty often on the Vaporesso Gen S Atom RBA in the billet box. Maybe this is the great Seamus. That drip tip looks familiar. Why does that drip tip look so familiar? Like I might've received one of those in the mail recently. Or, or, or we have a third freaking Seamus among us, which is fine, which is fine. That drip tip does look familiar though. We might have a third Seamus. Uh, last one, last assignment, America. Let's wrap this up. Uh, Robert, Robert. He even sent in his own commentary. Look at this. This week's bangers, Cthulhu with the Taita, Thelema with the Nefarious, Pulse AIO running a Nautilus, 0.7 ohm Saltnik, Pulse AIO 0.5 with a reload ammo RBA. Uh, you love to see it. Let's get a better look at this gear. Yeah. The Taita looks kind of sick in that pink tank on the Cthulhu. Custard monster, banana custard monster. I've never got to try that. We had another Prohibition Co. Speakeasy, which is a delicious liquid. The ammo RBA rules, the pulse rules. This is these are, this is just all banging all around. What's the Asmodus? Oh, that's the Nefarious. Thelema with the Nefarious on there. Okay, that's the Nefarious RTA. R RTA, RDTA, RDTA. If you're rip trippers, it's RDTA Up to everybody else. It's just an RDTA. You don't have to say it like that. You don't have to say it like that. I, I love it. The bangers, you know, uh, if I had to choose a favorite, which I never would, but this slew of Las Vape Centauruses uh, is kind of my favorite thing that I've seen this week that rules that instantly made me want to buy a Las Vape Centaurus M200 one of the new ones. If you want to see your bangers featured on this here vlog live stream video web zone, you can just email me nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject assignment planet globe. Like I said, chances are I'll see the attachment and uh, it'll get filed and used accordingly. Was that the great Seamus? Was that the great Seamus? The world may never know. We might have a third Seamus among us. Look, World's a weird place. The world is a weird place. Um, what I guess we should do now, since we're one hour into this here stream and divine, it's time for everybody to get in some shed time or uh, have a beer, you know, alter your mood in some way. Now I don't have a bumper for this, but let's check the super chats and let's do the first giveaway. Nope, too long, We're running long, can't even do it. Uh, let's see, Marcus, Marcus uh, just joined uh, the Cool Kids Club. Felt like I've been part of the family for years, thought I'd make it, oh fish. Welcome, Marcus, let me be the first to tell you, yo yo, welcome. Send an email to jeremyv at grimgreen.com. He'll get you set up on the Instagram. He'll get you all set up on the Discord. We're hanging out tonight. Probably not too late because I'm trying to leave in the early morning tomorrow again to run up to Santa Rosa to visit my dad for the weekend. But we'll still be hanging out on the Discord tonight, Marcus. Hell yeah on the Discord tonight. That's what we're doing. Now, here's the thing. I don't have any music. 
I don't have any uh, bumpers or special effects or anything like this other than like that's kind of a thing. Not really. DJ Mattress. So we're going to do a Star Wars themed giveaway. You ready for the Star Wars themed giveaway, Ashton Palmer? Okay, everybody who's a Star Wars person, get your typing fingers ready because you're going to need to send an email to me. You're going to need to send an email to me. Lee Carlisle just joined. <laughs> Hell yeah, Lee. Happy. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Happy to have you. Yo, yo, to ya. Yo, yo, and cheers to ya. But let me show you this. I mean, come on. This is the coolest shit of all time. This is the coolest thing of all time. It pains me to, to, to have to make room in my life with, without this, but it, it needs to go somewhere. It needs to go to a good Star Wars loving home. And I'd like to give it to a, a good Star Wars loving home. This is a giant Han Solo on top of a giant Tauntaun. It's officially Han Solo and Tauntaun. Han Solo and Tauntaun. We're staying in the Empire Strikes Back era tonight, I guess, kind of, at least with the giveaways. Um, here's the thing. I have a, a, a prolific Star Wars collection of things. It's not necessarily stuff that I've collected all over, over the years, although some of it will be. The majority of it I purchased. I purchased somebody else's Star Wars collection. And this was a weird thing that I never thought I would do or never experienced before, but this person that Casey worked with, Casey's my wife, this person, I got a burp coming and I don't want it to be like straight into the thing. The person uh, that my wife worked with was a huge Star Wars fan, as far as I know, still is a huge Star Wars fan, and had been collecting Star Wars things for years. And they're all in the packaging, and some of it's really rare, and some of it's not so rare. Uh, this isn't a monetary value thing. This is a purely for the love of Star Wars thing. And the opportunity came up that he was going to move somewhere out of the States to somewhere else, and this person didn't necessarily want to take their entire Star Wars collection with them that they had been collecting over the years. And so the opportunity came up where I could buy it. And so for a fee, I purchased this person's entire Star Wars collection. And I spent weeks, <laughs> like literal weeks, going through it and investigating every tiny little thing that I had just purchased. There's some, there's some old action figures still in the packaging. There's some, uh, there's some slide films. There's like film strips from Empire Strikes Back, from Star Wars, from Return of the Jedi. There's a Bib Fortuna in the packaging, uh, you know, figure. There's a whole, I mean, the level of Star Wars stuff that I purchased from uh, this person is tremendous like more star wars stuff than i've ever had in my life and so it's not very well organized i have it organized like in my favorite things and my least favorite things this right here han solo and tauntaun first of all it's gigantic the box not in great shape it's a little bit dusty it got a little bit stained on the back you know it's huge and awesome and this was probably one of my favorite things from the entire collection that I got. And it was in my office for roughly two years, sat up on the shelf. I loved looking at it. Every time I walked in my office, I went, yeah, there it is. There's the giant Han Solo and Tauntaun. So tonight, the Han Solo Tauntaun is going to go somewhere else. It's going to go it's going to go to another home. It's going to go to another home. And again, 
This isn't about money or how valuable these things are because I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in selling collectibles for a high price uh, or anything like that. I really, you know, in the spirit of the person that I bought it from and in the spirit of myself and in the spirit of Star Wars, I just want these to go to good homes where Star Wars fans will appreciate a giant Han Solo Tauntaun. Okay? Does that make sense? That's, that's, that's what happened. That's the story. That's the story. And so I'm keeping some of the stuff. I don't want anybody to think I'm, I'm getting rid of everything that I have. It needs to go to Hoth. It needs to go to Hoth. Uh, I'll, I'll swing by Sunset Mailboxes and see if uh, Linda can ship this to Hoth for me. But if the winner in Hoth wins it, then I'll, I'll have no choice. I'll have no choice. So this is a trivia question. This is a trivia question for this prize. Can I put this on the desk over here without knocking anything over? Maybe. Maybe. Just want to, you know, I guess I need to move it closer to myself. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I need to write down the question. Oh, that's an E on the end there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. If you want to enter this contest, let me get my mouse. If you want to enter this contest, you're going to send an email. You're going to send an email to contest at grimgreen.com, okay? Contest at grimgreen.com. That's how you're gonna win this. That's how you're going to walk away with the Star Wars Collector Series Han Solo and Tauntaun. It's heavy, probably weighs, I'm guessing, uh, two to three pounds. You know, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, it's a heavy collectible toy item. Again, I just want this to go to a good home, you know? So if you're not, if you don't care about Star Wars, don't enter uh, or do enter and then take the prize and then do something, you know, burn it or whatever. I don't care. Actually, I do care. I just want this to go to a good home. So the question is, what is my second favorite Star Wars movie go? Contest at grimgreen.com. I'll even put on a little, uh, we'll put on a little contest music since that's all we have. What is my second favorite Star Wars movie? Email your answer to contest at grimgreen.com. What is my favorite Star Wars movie? The first correct answer will win. The first correct answer will win. What is my second favorite Star Wars movie? Answer correctly. This could be yours. This, this could be yours, you know? You never know. Let's read some super chats while you guys, while people are answering. Uh, SVK Vape says, uh, almost forgot Monday, I became 12 years smoke free. Much love to you and thank you. Much love to the chat. It's great to be a cool kid. Did I already ta say that? 12 years, SVK, fucking 12 years is rad as hell. That's rad as hell. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right, we did Marcus. Uh, Hannah says, 
Yo, yo, Nick, second week running with the live crew. <laughs> Hope you're good, my dude. Thinking of starting my own YouTube series called Gr <laughs> Grim Made Me Buy It. I say go for it. I say hell yeah, dude, go for it, Hannah Brown. Just do it. Start a YouTube channel, start a YouTube series called Grim Made Me Buy It. For the record, I don't think I've made anybody buy anything. You know, I didn't, I don't force your wallet open. I don't make you. Maybe I do make you. Maybe a little bit. I can see that. <laughs> yo, yo, Hannah. I'm ha happy to see you here in the live crew. Second week in a row. Hell yeah, second week in a row. All right. Let's get to these answers. Uh, it's not potato salad. It's not solo. It's not uh it's not Return of the Jedi. 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 It's not at Return of the Jedi. Everybody thinks that uh, Return of the Jedi is my second favorite uh Star Wars movie. It's just simply not. Uh, it's not Rogue One. It's not Space Balls. <laughs> it's not Space Balls. <laughs> Although Spaceballs, like, damn, that could be my second favorite Star Wars movie. You know, it could be like my third favorite Star Wars movie is Spaceballs. That could be a damn thing. Spaceballs just makes me think of Matt Sinister every single time. Uh, it's not the Goblet of Fire. All right. All right, you guys. I think I saw a correct answer. It's not Return of the Jedi. It's not Return of the Jedi. Oh, my Lord. Nope, that's it. We got a winner. We got a winner, 100%. We got a 100% winner. And I don't even have any winner music. That's kind of cool. That works together. Uh, Kevin K. Fucking Kevin K. You did it. Uh, I'm going to email you back that says you did it. And then I just need your address and a, and a, I just don't even need a photo ID. I just need your address. Yeah. My second favorite star Wars movie is the empire strikes back. I keep a, uh, I keep a, a chart. Uh, let me see if I can find it, but, uh, I keep a chart that ranks my favorite, uh, all, my, all the Star Wars movies in order. I mean, all the Star Wars movies uh, as, I lo as I enjoy them. You know, they're ranked. It's like Star Wars ranking. I thought it existed. Maybe it doesn't. Okay. It might exist. It might exist on my computer. If, uh, if I could find it. You know when your Mac gives you the spinning beach ball of death? I hate that shit. There's nothing worse. Oh, you're trying to find something? Sorry. You get the spinning beach ball. No, Star Wars with an S. Oh my God. Is this it? Is this the newest one? Yeah, okay. This is the newest one. There we go. That these are this is in order. My my Star Wars ranking chart. In order, my favorite Star Wars movies. Return of the Jedi, number one, best thing ever. Return of the Jedi, love the shit out of it. Empire Strikes Back is number two. The Last Jedi is number three. Star Wars: The Original is number four. I got Rogue One after that. I got Solo after that. I got The Force Awakens after that, and I got. The Rise of Skywalker after that. The Rise of Skywalker might be moving to the bad section, though. Episode 2 and Episode 3 are bad with a little poop on them. Episode 1 
it's complicated. I don't love it, but I do like it. And I, it's objectively the best prequel movie. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is a little prophetic, right? A little poetic. Hoth collectible, and the answer is a Hoth movie. Congratulations, Kevin K. Congratulations. I will ship this to you as soon as I possibly can. It'll probably be next, probably coming up on next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. But that's prize number one. You know, we're getting off to a good start here. Prize number one. I'm going to put you back over here. That adorned my office shelf for literal years. Literal years. In fact, I'm gonna, I'll include the note. I'm going to say Kevin K. Except it looks like Kenan. Well done, Kevin K. Well, well done. Congratulations. Don't worry. We're going to do one more, and it might start becoming like a regular thing. Like every other vlog, we might give away some uh, some Star Wars collectibles, some, uh, you know, toys, for back of a lack of a better term. Toys. We're going to give away some Star Wars toys. I think I just need to sing happy birthday before we get into any news, right? I think we need to, uh, wait, 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 watch fight scene autopsy about revenge of the Sith. And it'll change your opinion of episode three a little bit. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Ezra. Uh, I, I, I love you. I appreciate you. It, you can't change my mind about episode three. I watch it. I've watched it many times every year. I watch the prequels. Once a year, I, I go through all the prequels. One through three, I just watch them all. I just suffer through them, and I just watch them. And, uh, you know, there's some things I find redeeming in there, and and most of it I don't. And uh, the, the every single time, the Anakin-Obi-Wan lightsaber battle uh, on the volcano planet that I can't remember the name of right now, Mustafar, every time that starts... I just go, oh God, here we go. Here we go. Here's 20 minutes of lightsaber fighting. 20, 20 minutes of needless lightsaber fighting. It's like quantity over quality, you know? They're just going up mountains. And they're going on the lava. And like, oh, okay. And then they're on the thing and it's falling. And they're, and they're just not stopping. And I'm like, is this ever ever going to end up the side down into the lava on the climbing things on the scaffolding like okay you know it's not uh, the amount of swinging that makes a lightsaber good fight it's the reason behind it and that's why vader and luke skywalker at the end of return of the jedi is an amazing lightsaber battle because of the story that led up to it not just 20 minutes of all over the place behind the back around they're just swinging shit around stop knock it off i'm done stop it stop it stop it <laughs> knock it off <laughs> i'm over it knock it off lightsabers are cool but you know, you know, it's not what makes, it's not what, it's not the lightsaber that makes it cool. Anyway, all over the place, all over the place, endless hours, endless hours. And then it comes down to just Anakin just tried to jump too high. You know, they were jumping on lava rocks and jumping off of scaffolding and flying all over the place. And then Anakin loses by trying to jump one last time. One last time, just one more jump. That's what ended him. That was the downfall of Darth Vader. He tried to jump too high. Ugh, come on, George Lucas. Get out of here with that shit. It would have been so much better of a lightsaber battle if there was, you know, some more dialogue and an actual history between Anakin and Obi-Wan instead of being told that they're friends and not actually seeing that they're friends because throughout episode two and episode three, they just hate each other. They're just arguing the whole time. I'm like, how, why am I supposed to believe these people are friends? Okay, George, 
Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. The prequels are fine. They'll they'll forever be there, and it's fine. I've watched through the prequels many times. Like I said, I watch them every year, and it just isn't my favorite thing. My watch is dying. My watch is dead. Damn it. Okay. So enough about Star Wars. Let's get out of here. Let's do some birthdays. Who wants to sing happy birthday? Who wants to sing happy birthday? Does anybody want to sing happy birthday? I'd like you to I'd like to sing happy birthday. There's uh I have at least three birthdays here. Three birthdays. Sorry. Was that a spoiler? Was that a spoiler? I know. Obi-Wan had the high ground. I have the high ground, Anakin. And then Anakin's like, I can jump one more time. Sure, certainly. I, I've jumped a thousand times during this lightsaber battle. Why couldn't I jump one last time? And then Anakin just goes, bram, bram. you know, Obi-Wan just goes, bram, bram. and one fell swoop just cuts off all of his appendages. Like, that's terrible. Why would Obi-Wan do that to begin with? Why didn't Obi-Wan just kill him? I mean, I guess I know that Obi-Wan is conflicted about it, but he's obviously gone to the dark side. Your friend is no longer Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker is dead. This is a bad guy. And you're a Jedi. Okay, 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 okay. Lightsabers everywhere. I get it. It's fine. I'm going to stop... Uh, I think they did Sam Jackson dirty in the prequels too. I think they did Samuel L. Jackson dirty in the prequels as well. Uh, his character should have been cooler. His character should have done more. His character should not have lost his hand. Like that's the most cliche Star Wars thing of all, you know, of all time. Anthony Rommel's like, I could have cleared it. And you know what? Like, dude, he's the force. He has the force and he's using the dark side of the force, which is stronger strength you know how angry anakin was in that moment he could have launched over obi-wan 0.2 seconds just stabbed him in the back just psh, lightsaber through the back sorry obi-wan i have the high ground you are my brother anakin i loved you i know okay tell me to breathe <laughs> craig good looking out let's take a breath let's take a breath and Have some water. Vape at Star Wars, like vape advocacy, is something that I have a lot of opinions on. And I could talk about it for uh, endless hours. Endless hours. Endless hours. Here's the thing. I know. Then we wouldn't have had Vader's redemption. Right. He had to become Darth Vader. We knew that he was going to become Darth Vader, Neil. We knew that he was going to become Darth Vader. And then we wouldn't have had his redemption. And then what upsets me even more about Star Wars Episode Nine, which is definitely getting moved to the bad area, is it didn't matter. Anakin's redemption didn't matter. Ultimately, if you follow the story all the way through Episode Nine, you go, oh, uh, okay, well, the original trilogy didn't matter at all because they retconned everything and they just changed it all. Anakin Skywalker was never supposed to bring balance to the Force. They just completely destroyed the, uh, the the Jedi prophecy of him bringing balance to the Force because he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. His sacrifice was in vain. His good side turn at the end didn't matter. Didn't matter. I'd like to, I'd like to talk to J.J. Abrams about Star Wars. You know, I think my first question would be, how dare you? Have you ever watched Star Wars? Do you know who Luke Skywalker is? Do you know who, who Darth Vader is? Do you know who Han Solo is? Are you familiar with these characters in any capacity? Are you familiar with the universe in any capacity? Yeah, there's nine episodes now of Star Wars. I like episode eight a ton. Let's sing happy birthday. I don't want to keep talking about Star Wars. Happy birthday, you guys. There's some birthdays happening. Uh, TJ, TJ from Twitch, AKA T, TJ Stenter, uh, Lee, who I haven't seen in a hot minute, Lee, not the real Gerard Butler has a birthday, I think soon or today. And Eli, Eli Q, 
Eli Q has a birthday today. So I'd like to sing happy birthday. Don't stop trying to bait me. Stop trying to bait me into Star Wars. The sequels were the worst, especially episode eight. It was terrible as well, but eight really sucked. See, here's the thing, Troy V. I know that that's the consensus view. I think Star Wars episode eight is the best of the sequel trilogy. I think episode seven is just a retread of a new hope, like beat for beat. It's a retread of a new hope. As soon as episode seven was over, I went, oh, I've, I've seen that movie before. I've seen that movie when it was called Star Wars. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. It's the same movie. Same movie with different characters. And I find it hard to believe that Ray is in her, what, well, clearly in her 20s, probably in her late 20s. Luke Skywalker wasn't that long ago. Am I to believe that Ray doesn't, they don't know who the Jedi are? The New Republic ruled for like hundreds of years. They don't know history. They don't know that the Jedi were real. She's like, I thought the Jedi were a myth. This was not that long ago. This was not that long ago. Open a history book, Ray. The Jedi ruled the New Republic or Knights of the Old Republic for like a hundred generations or something like this. How do they immediately think, oh, I think the Jedi are a myth. You, do you think the Jedi are a myth? It literally just happened. You, you're, you're living in an AT-AT. Like you, you're, you're aware of the empire, right? Okay, you know how the empire came to power? Jedi Council, remember all that? Remember history, Ray? Remember history? Okay, okay, that's it. So I hated episode seven. Actually, I didn't hate episode seven. I liked episode seven when it came out because I, as I was watching it in the theater, I thought, oh God, we're getting a good Star Wars movie. We're getting like a, a legitimately good Star Wars movie. I immediately loved it more than the prequels. And when I walked out of the theater, I thought, hot damn, Disney's gonna rule. This is a great Star Wars movie. And then I saw it again and I saw it again and I saw it again and I kept watching it. And then I went, oh, it's a new hope. It's literally just a new hope. It's a new hope over again. It's a new hope over again. E episode eight has some of my favorite Star Wars in it of all time. Some of my favorite Star Wars moments of all time are in episode eight, hands down. Uh, let's see, there was a uh, Toxic Avenger was better than Star Wars. You know, I, I, can't, I can't be too mean to trauma. Traumaville, uh, Toxic Avenger rules. All those horrible schlocky B movies, I love them. I love them. They're great. Let's not talk about Star Wars anymore. Stop trying to stop trying to bait me into Star Wars. Now, surely, but right, you could ask a twenty-something about the Cold War, but surely they would have learned about the Cold War in school. Or they're aware of even like, you could say, tell me about the Cold War. They might not be able to tell you about it, but they at least know probably what it is or the words, the Cold War. I heard the, I think, I thought the Jedi were a myth. Well, Luke Skywalker's in his 60s. You thought it was a myth? The Jedi were alive probably in your lifetime, Ray. I thought they were a myth. The Obi-Wan series rules. Okay, I'm sorry. Tribal Buddha is getting upset with all the Star Wars talk, even though he's a Star Wars fan. Happy birthday, uh, TJ. TJ Stenter, not the real Gerard Butler, and Eli Q. Happy birthday to you guys. Sorry for ranting about Star Wars, but uh, happy birthday to you. I hope everybody sings along with me because I like singing happy birthday. I'm a fan of birthdays in general. I think you should get to celebrate your, your birth day. So let's sing. Happy birthday to you guys. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eli. Also TJ from Twitch. Stenter. Also Lee. Not the real Gerard Butler. Happy birthday to you. 
Oh, blast beats. Skip around the room. 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 <gasps> Happy birthday to Finnegan. Happy birthday to Finnegan. Happy birthday, dear Finnegan. Happy birthday to Finnegan. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Those are the rules. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Okay, look, if you're talking about Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, yes, 100%. If you're talking about, like, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, yes, 100%. Like, I am, I'm, feel like I'm pretty well-versed in B-movies and trauma movies. You know, I grew up, you know, my buddy Jerry exposed me to all these terrible movies like Reanimator, you know, Dead Alive, all the Evil Dead movies, Army of Darkness. Love them. Love them. Love them. I don't have a uh, rating scale, but I also don't have like the Toxic Avenger tattooed on my throat. I have a Star Wars Stormtrooper tattooed on my throat. So that's what I get uh, all uppity about. That's what I get all uppity about. All right, you guys, uh, let's jump now directly. It's everybody's favorite reanimator rules. Reanimator rules. Repo, yeah. Uh, Repo and Repo Man. There's two separate movies, right? Repo, a genetic opera, and then Repo Man. Dude, I can go down this rabbit hole. I've watched Meet the Feebles. Have you ever watched Meet the Feebles? <laughs> Have you ever watched Cannibal the Musical? <laughs> I've watched some... Met yeah, The Giver? Hell yeah, The Giver. Wasn't Mark Hamill in The Giver? Reanimator is pretty terrible, but it's awesome. Also, uh, Dead Alive. I don't know if anybody's ever watched Dead, Dead Alive. If you're into like uh, horrible B-movie horror movies, Dead Alive, Peter Jackson of Lord of the Rings, his directorial debut was this horrible uh, 80s horror movie where uh, nobody could die. Like nobody could die. It was like a zombie based idea, but you know, like even if you got cut in half and like your guts fell out, your guts would like come alive and like start trying to kill people. It's it's spectacular. I, I suggest uh, I suggest everybody watches Dead Alive. Everybody should watch Dead Alive. But it's time for everybody's favorite segment, including mine, where rage, sweat, and truth butter flow like the salmon of Capistrano. It's a tough world out there, you guys. It's tough to be a vapor in 2023. It's even tougher, I think, if you were a person smoking cigarettes in 2023 because you just wouldn't know what to believe. You know, if you follow a lot of like the mainstream media, and I really hate sounding like that guy, but if you follow a lot of the mainstream media, CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, Fox News, all of those, uh, you're going to hear a lot of crazy shit about vaping. <laughs> A lot of crazy, ridiculous shit about vaping. And uh, generally, none of it's true. You know, generally, none of it's true. Vaping is for tobacco harm reduction. And I think the majority of people know that now because this jail has been selling e-cigs to their inmates. And guess what? Smoking's gone. Nobody smokes cigarettes anymore in jail. They've made $19,000, profiting $11,000 off of selling e-cigarettes to inmates in just one month. Uh, you know, they're tamper-proof. Um, they said uh, all the inmates are, are calmer. Now they're calmer now. They're not smoking cigarettes anymore. Cigarettes aren't a currency anymore. So vaping is good enough for prisoners, people in jail, but it's not good enough for you. The government doesn't want you vaping. The government wants you smoking combustible tobacco cigarettes so you can continue being just a, a product, you know, so you can, can continue just being a, a product of the state. They want you smoking cigarettes. You pay, you pay those 
hefty cigarette taxes. That's why they're trying to put taxes all over vaping products. So just keep in mind that vaping's good enough for prisoners, good enough for people in jail, not good enough for you. They, they, they won't let you do it. They won't let you do it. All right. There's going to be a, a little bit of film strip time, but I did want to talk about this Congressional Tobacco Harm Reduction Caucus. Uh, I feel like uh, vaping uh, pulled a lot of people into the world of politics and uh, regulatory things just just violently and suddenly we were like pulled into this world of having to like talk to politicians you know having to talk to politicians and getting to know the way that regulatory agencies work and and seeing all of these things strewn out in front of us and watching the CDC blame nicotine e-cigarettes for evoli which is couldn't be couldn't be further from the truth but we still hear it every like every single day evoli 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 did you know about evoli vaping can cause evoli did you know that vaping can cause evoli or can it not cause evoli because evoli only happened in a few states exclusively in the united states of america despite 86 million plus vapors worldwide over the last 15 years of safe use. But there's people who want to find harm in vaping. They just want to. They just want to. <laughs> they want to. Oh, look, uh, in the UK, government pays their health care. In Canada, government pays their health care. Canada doesn't give a shit about vaping. Canada recently reluctantly very, very reluctantly and quietly said some things about vaping, whispered some things about vaping to their citizens. But uh, Canada doesn't give a shit about you. Canada doesn't give a shit about vaping. U.S. regulatory agencies don't exist to protect us. What have you lost your mind? U.S. regulatory agencies exist to maintain the status quo. Did you guys know that as of right now, literally this day right now, that none, none of the products that FDA have authorized to be on the market are, are owned by anybody other than Big Tobacco? A smarter way to say it <laughs> would be Big Tobacco owns the vape industry right now, the legal vape industry in the United States of America. And you know who saw to that? The FDA. The FDA banned and rejected every independent vape company's products across the board and then went, oh, Big Tobacco, you'll get through. Yeah, you'll get through. Uh, oh, yeah, Big Tobacco, another Big Tobacco product. Yeah, you'll get through. Another Big Tobacco product. Yep, yeah, you'll get through. One more Big Tobacco product. Oh, yeah, you'll get through. What's this? A oh, 100 mil bottle of three milligram nicotine that no youth on earth has ever feigned interest in even using? No, that's not appropriate for the protection of public health. That needs to be banned. But the same liquid in a different format from Big Tobacco, that, that will get authorized. That will get authorized. Big Tobacco owns the vape industry in the United States of America and the FDA handed it to them on a silver gilded platter. It was disgusting. I watched it happen in front of my very eyes. And it's something that you couldn't tell me. I wouldn't have believed you. I wouldn't have believed you if I didn't see it happen with my own eyes. Telling people that, oh yeah, FDA made sure that the only vapor products allowed on the market came from big tobacco. You, you sound like a crazy person. I watched it happen. I watched it happen in front of my eyeballs. But on the upside, on the plus side, there's a Congressional Tobacco Harm Reduction Caucus happening right now. So uh, we're going to read now from uh, Jim McDonald, uh, 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 Vape in 360. This is a quick, quick little article here. A congressional caucus dedicated to encouraging tobacco harm reduction is being formed along with the backing of Philip Morris International, PMI. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh, what's that mean? God, we've come to a point where we either have to trust the federal government, which is a terrible idea, or we have to trust big tobacco companies, which seems like a terrible idea. They both, both of those options, as someone who is an ex cigarette smoker uh, and, uh, you know, registered California libertarian, I don't like either of those options. I'd rather not trust the government and, and I'd rather not trust big tobacco. But here we are. Here we are. Philip Morris International, the congressional caucuses are informal groups that gather to pursue common legislative goals. Yeah, so that's what a caucus is. The existence of a caucus was first reported by Politico earlier this week, which noted that lobbyists had been hired in January by PMI to lobby on tobacco harm reduction, FDA oversight, and the creation of this harm reduction caucus. This is a really, really very, very good thing. And all you'll see on the internet, especially from that little shit bag, Nicholas Florco from Politico, he calls it a supposed tobacco harm reduction caucus. And their only supporter is Philip Morris International. Oh, surprising. Big tobacco's lobbying again. This is a really, really good thing for public health as we will read. Yesterday, Stat News reported that the caucus would be co-chaired by Pennsylvania Republican Pres Representative Guy Reschlenthaler uh, and North Dakota Democrat Don Davis. Don Davis. Reschlenthaler, in his third term, is Chief Deputy Whip of the Republican-controlled House. Davis is a first-term House member and also belongs to the Congres Cong Congressional Black Caucus. What will the Tobacco Harm Reduction Caucus do? The caucus, I just like saying caucus. You ever say caucus like a thousand times in a row? The caucus will provide a forum to discuss all aspects of public health debate, ranging from underage youth prevention, risk-based taxation, methods to improve the public's understanding of less harmful alternative products, and the regulatory processes governing these products. According to a letter to prospective members quoted in the stat article, tobacco harm reduction, often shortened to THR, is a strategy of reducing tobacco risk by encouraging people who smoke to switch to less harmful nicotine products that aren't combusted. Do we need to bring up Sweden again? Sweden's smoke-free. Sweden's about to become smoke-free 17 years ahead of the EU target. And you know how they did it? Snus, vaping, less harmful nicotine products. That's it. Period. One, two, three. That's how they did it. Um, let's, I'm going to skip down here to uh, this part because I think this is important for everybody to know. The lobbying activity by Philip Morris International coincides with that company's entry into the American marketplace, where it will not sell combustible tobacco products. Not selling them. Although they share the name Philip Morris, PMI is no longer connected to Philip Morris USA, the Altria Group subsidiary, subsidiary that sells Marlboro cigarettes in the United States. So PMI despite the name PMI, has actually nothing to do with the cigarette company Philip Morris International. PMI was spun off in 2008 from the original Philip Morris company that was then named, that was then renamed Altria. PMI does not sell cigarettes outside of the United States of America. PMI purchased the manufacturer Sweetest Match for $16 billion last November, giving it an instant and major footprint in the American low-risk nicotine market. Swedish Match sells Zinn nicotine pouches, the U.S. market leader, as well as General Snus, which is my brand du jour. I love General Snus. I bought a lot of it. I just sent some out to people so that everybody can try some snus. PMI also plans to market its heated tobacco product, Icos, in the U.S. beginning next year after buying back the American licensing rights. Okay. 2019, Swedish Match became the first company with products to receive a modified risk tobacco product designation, an MRTP, from the FDA when the agency granted it to eight general brand snus varieties. Snus is appropriate for the protection of public health. Don't let anybody tell you that snus and nicotine patches 
are, are anything but good for public health. They're, they're tremendous for public health. Do I need to mention Sweden again? Don't make me point at the tattoo. I have the Swedish crest tattooed on my throat, on my back of my neck, because hashtag Sweden, because hashtag harm reduction. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. PMI does sell cigarettes outside of the US. Rocco, thank you. Appreciate you keeping me honest there. Does sell cigarettes outside of the US. You know, so I'm dyslexic, so sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't do so well with the reading words part. PMI sells vaping products in Europe, but has not in the US, which would require first obtaining FDA authorization through the pre-market tobacco application pathway. It was reported in January that PMI was among the tobacco companies considering a partnership with or full purchase of Jewel Labs. Earlier this year, it ramped up its American presence. PMI hired well-known vaping industry advocates, Paul Blair, formerly with Turning Point Brands, which is a vape company, and Amanda Wheeler, J Vapes and the American Vapor Manufacturers Association in government affairs roles. PMI is headquartered in Stamford, Connecticut. Stamford, Connecticut. Stamford, Connecticut. Stamford, Connecticut. So the caucus exists and its biggest support right now is PMI, which does not sell cigarettes in the United States of America and actually has nothing to do with Philip Morris International, the makers of Marlboro. So I guess the big point of this is the Tobacco Harm Reduction Caucus is good. This is a good thing. PMI supporting it, not selling cigarettes, only selling heat, not burn, and snus, and probably vapor products at some point. Th this is a good thing. It's going to be spun, and it's already being spun by a lot of media as a bad thing. Oh, PMI, you know, you big tobacco, getting involved in lobbying, trying to keep people smoking cigarettes. There's a lot of nuance to this, a lot of nuance to this, and it's obnoxious getting an article or getting in arguments with people on Twitter defending PMI because they just don't care to hear it. They just hear PMI, they think big tobacco, big tobacco is the enemy. That's the, that's the tobacco control mindset. If big tobacco's involved, can't be good. What if big tobacco's selling products that don't kill people? Is that bad? Or should we force them to continue selling cigarettes? What, what, what's our option here? What's, what's our option here, you guys? I think Dimitri said this in 2016, 2017. He said, the vape industry is going to get help from big tobacco, whether we want it or not. Big tobacco knows that its days are numbered of selling cigarettes, unless it's in, you know, India where they've banned vaping or, uh, you know, Turkmenistan, where they've banned vaping, you know, wherever the World Health Organization gives an award for people banning vaping, that's where that's where they're going to sell their tobacco cigarettes. The U.S. market, because of we guys, because of you guys, vaping. Oh, we just want to vape. We don't really even want to smoke cigarettes anymore. We just want to vape. And PMI knows that and PMI sees that. It's like, well, shit, do I side with PMI? I think I'm siding with PMI. I've yet to see an argument, like a compelling argument for me to not side with PMI on this. It can only be good for harm reduction. It will only be good for tobacco harm reduction. It will only be good for people that smoke cigarettes. Tobacco Harm Reduction Caucus. Uh, it's a hell of a thing and everybody should get involved. Uh, I mean, get involved, but you know, stay in the loop as, as much as you can. Uh, I'll post a link in the description as well to the Americans for tax reform. I'll post this in the chat right now if you want to. Pow, there it is. Yeah, uh, yep, 100% Tribal Buddha gets it. The vape industry is killing tobacco. So any smart company who still wants to exist should move to the new wave of products. Yeah, and it just so happens that this new wave of products doesn't kill anybody. So it's literally win-win for big tobacco. We need to let big tobacco 
sell products that don't kill people. They want to. But there's, you know, senators and attorney generals and and Congress people who go, nope. Big tobacco can only sell cigarettes. We ban ban all the cigarette competition. Ban all the competition to cigarettes. Cigarettes will always be on the market. Uh, FDA is getting rid of the term grandfathered because, I don't know, for gender reasons. They're, they've created some new term for it. But cigarettes are grandfathered in. They'll always be on the market. FDA literally can't ever ban them. They're not allowed. They're not allowed to ban them. Just straight up not allowed. So let's get on to some... Uh, some film strips here. There's a there's a long version of the video I'm about to show you, but this is uh, everybody should go subscribe to Colin Mendelson over on Twitter or over on uh, in, on YouTube, please. He's uh, uploading some great stuff from Australia, and uh, this is Sir, this is Senator Canavan in Australia talking about Australia's failed vaping policy. There's been quite and uh, what I would call uproar in Australia regarding the vape legislation. And it's not just coming from vapors. It's not just coming from industry. It's coming from politicians themselves. Uh, MPs and Congress people are questioning, questioning the methods, questioning the, the, the prescription model. Uh, we're going to listen to this. It's a, a minute and 29 seconds long. I'm going to make sure that everything's turned up as loud as humanly possible. So uh, this is just a clip, like I said, from this longer video, this 11-minute video of uh, Senator Canavan questioning, uh, questioning, I can't recall who he's questioning. He's questioning someone from public health. He's questioning someone from public health and he's asking about youth vaping rates right now. Youth vaping rates right now. That's the context of this. Let's watch. What is it today? Um, 18 to 24. By what is it today? I, th I believe he's talking about youth vaping rates and this is someone from the Australia Department of Public Health, uh, you know, whatever their equivalent of uh, the TPD, the Ch TPG, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, the TGA, sorry, TGA. You know, so many countries and so many like three letter health orgs to keep track of. What is 25%? Is that correct? grown from five to 25%? That's what it says here, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, so the, the prescription model that was introduced in mid 2020 on any metric has to be noted as a massive failure, doesn't it? I mean, you. you proportion of use among young Australians grew by five times. I think probably a variety of reasons why there's been a proliferation of use and it would be difficult to trace all of those reasons. I don't think anybody's done a study of that. But, but I was told, I mean, I was heavily involved and, 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 and I'm sure Professor Murphy remembers and others and with others I was very critical of the decision in mid-2020, but I was assured that no, this is the right model and it will help crack down on, on, on the proliferation of vaping. Obviously, that was wrong. Why should we have any faith that the same people we, who were totally wrong about the 2020 reforms are going to be right about the 2023 reforms? I don't think anybody could have predicted the widespread non-compliance with the legal requirements. I well, just don't think people could. Well, I did. <laughs> plenty of others did. No one could have expected the widespread non-compliance. No one could have expected the widespread non-compliance. What happens when you have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people using vapor products and then you ban them and make them prescription only no you think everyone like no one's going to start breaking the law and not not complying with your weird ass prescription model no one could have guessed no one could have guessed there would be this level of non-compliance except probably literally everybody that warned you that this would create loads of non-compliance and a thriving black market I'd said at the time it would lead to a growth in a black market, and that's exactly what it's done. Uh, and now we're being told, no, 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 it'll be all fine again through what is still a prescription model or a pharmacy retail model. It seems very strange that we double down on failure like that, on massive failure too. 
seems really strange that we're gonna double down on massive failure. Do you see how upset this, uh, this Congress person is? This Senator Canavan, he says, I was assured, I was told, I was assured that this prescription model would, uh, you know, would stop the youth vaping, but youth vaping has gone up in that time. So by any metric, the prescription model is an abject failure. And here we are about to double down on an abject failure. And did you see like her weird, meek, timid responses? Like, okay, well, what caused this rise in youth vaping? And she's like, oh, well, uh, I, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Could it could be a lot of things. I don't, I don't think anybody really even knows. You know, what could have caused this? Nobody expected so many people, you know, to, to not comply with this. Oh my gosh, it's weird. It's like we were warned ad nauseum over and over again that there would be a, a, a thriving black market in Australia, but I didn't think it would really happen. I didn't think it would really happen. People are standing up in Australia. I mean, that's just good to see. Is that his name? Matt Canavan? Matt Canavan. Matt Canavan's my favorite right now. Matt Canavan, just calling it like it is. Just saying, well, if this failed, which it's clearly failed, it did not accomplish any of the goals that it was supposed to, is clearly as a failure. Why are we doubling down on such a, such a failed ass policy in Australia? Why are we doing this? She had no answers for him. I'll leave a link in the description to the full ass video of that because it's great and you should watch it. I got another little film strip here. I got another another little film strip here. In fact, uh, let me get to this. This is a this is a better. I won't show you that. I'll show you this. Uh, London Tobacco Alliance. Okay, so this is uh, government. Funded, it's the NCS, NCSCT, which is the National Stop Smoking, uh, you know, funded by Public Health England to train and support professionals so they can be effective in helping people stop smoking. This is government funded. This is government funded. And this is the London Tobacco Alliance. Uh, just giving out some good information about uh, vaping. We have Louise Ross here, who's a clinical consultant at the National Center for Smoking Cessation and Training. Um, this is just, you know, as a contrast to the things that are going on in the United States and uh, Australia and uh, Canada, where you hear things like, nope, vaping doesn't help you quit smoking. Evoli, you guys, Evoli. Oh my gosh, Evoli. Could you, like, like, let's just watch this. Let's watch Louise, who's a boss, by the way. She's just the real MVP. Imagine any U.S. politician or any U.S. Department of Public Health, American Cancer, American Lung, American Heart. Imagine any of them saying what Louise Ross is about to say. This is the normal in the U.K. because... Hi, hashtag smoke free like Sweden. Hi, hashtag harm reduction. It's safer than smoking because there's nothing smoked, there's nothing combusted, so there's no tar, there's no carbon monoxide, which are the very, very harmful ingredients in cigarette smoke. There's nothing of that. You're taking in nicotine uh, and flavorings, uh, but not the, not the smoke that you'd find in a, in a combustible cigarette. That's it. That's just that simple. And it feels like she's explaining it to like a five-year-old, you know, it feels like she's explaining it to a five-year-old because people just don't get it. People are so misinformed and I don't blame them. It's hard to blame someone who's misinformed. It's like, oh, well, you're just misinformed. That's all. It's almost, it's kind of not your fault. You're constantly bombarded with wrong information and confusing information all the time. So I'm not, I'm not, I can't hold it against you if you're misinformed. I can't hold it against you if you're confused. Everybody's messaging around this is confusing. So for her to explain this, like she's explaining it to a five-year-old, like, uh, okay, nicotine vaping isn't smoking. There's no smoke involved. Are you with me so far? <laughs> Are you with me so far? 
So because of that, because there's no combustion, because there's no smoke, we don't get things like tar and carbon monoxide and volatile organic compounds. All you're getting is nicotine and flavoring, which means it's much, much safer than lighting a cigarette on fire and inhaling the burning smoke from it. Are you still following me? Are you still following me? <laughs> and then there's people that will still, still go, oh, well, it's an addiction. You know, you're still addicted. You're swapping one thing for another. Oh, still big tobacco. If big tobacco is involved, nothing good can come from that. Nothing. Zero good. We at here at, in the tobacco control space, we are more upset at big tobacco than we are at the death and disease that big tobacco products have caused humanity. They don't care about saving lives. They care about punishing big tobacco. And that, that's some messed up priorities. That's some messed up priorities. Oh my God, that's some messed up priorities. But that's just tobacco control right now. That's just tobacco control right now. Um, I think that's it. I think I'll wrap up news and advocacy there. There wasn't uh, much more I wanted to mention other than uh, the Veritas cohort study is still a damn thing. It's still going on. It's still a study that you can be a part of. If I could find the little tab right here, there it is. The Veritas cohort study. Cohere is launching the pilot for a groundbreaking Veritas cohort study. I've uh, talked about this in years past. It's still going on, uh, which will try to identify if there are any harmful effects of long-term regular vaping on respiratory health or other endpoints for people who have never smoked or smoked less than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime. So if you're a person that... <laughs> Yep. One vape. One vape will just make you rain in blood. You know? One vape. You're like, oh shit. That's it. Ah! I'm I'm Tom Araya and Slayer now. High levels of heavy metal. <laughs> Damn, is that Motorhead? Is that Motorhead coming from my Cali burn? If you want to be a part of this, you could possibly be a part of this. If you're a person that has not, um, if you're a person that is not smoked a lot of cigarettes, you've only smoked a hundred cigarettes in your lifetime. You you could be a part of this study. You could be a part of this study. L look, Apathy Miller. Listen, I know. Here's the thing. I'm planning on doing a uh, a nicotine video soon. As soon as I can get like a day to write a script for it, I'm going to do a nicotine video. Uh, hopefully dispelling a lot of myths about nicotine and just serving up some science. You know, serving up some facts exactly like this. Nicotine isn't addictive. Yeah, they, they can't get rodents to just self-administer just nicotine. They won't do it. Rodents need uh, MAOIs and uh, arsenic and other inclusions in order to become addicted to nicotine. You can't get rodents addicted to just nicotine. They don't care. They're not interested in it. They have some and they go, I don't care. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Thank you for your text message, Michelle Lynn. Yeah, 100%. I wasn't speaking on anything other than his stance on on vaping and showing that the prescription model is an abject failure, abject failure. In fact, I'm just going to leave you with this last thing. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, Senator Holly Hughes, you want to do, we need to fact check Senator Holly Hughes real quick. Senator Holly Hughes, this is an eight minute video that I wish I, we could just watch the whole thing, but we don't have time. How about a taste? Achieve by 2030, yet Sweden is set to meet this year. So how have they done it? Sweden. The answer is both straightforward and damning of the approach taken by the Australian government. Sweden has made less harmful alternatives to cigarettes accessible, affordable and socially acceptable. 
products such as snus, oral nicotine pouches and vaping products were introduced and embraced, leading to a health revolution. In just 14 years, from 26, 2006 to 2020, these alternatives contributed to a striking 60 per cent decrease in Swedish smoking rates. And in so she talks about that, Sweden. She talks about tobacco harm reduction. She talks about what a failure the prescription model has been. She talks about why aren't we doing things like Sweden? Why aren't we embracing tobacco harm reduction if we really want our cigarette rates to go down? Why aren't we embracing snooze? Why aren't we embracing vaping? Why aren't we doing these things? It's eight minutes of gloriousness. Gloriousness from Senator Holly Hughes uh, over there in Australia. So you, it's too late. It's too late, Kent. Too late. I know all about your self-administration of nicotine. I've had to listen to it in the same hotel room, you know, in the same hotel room. I've had to listen to that. I've had to listen to that rectal uh, vestigial pleasure anus. <laughs> I'm putting links in the description to literally everything I talked about. That's going to wrap it up for news and advocacy. It's not going to take up the majority of the vlog tonight, but I'm never going to apologize for doing news and advocacy. We could do an, an oops all news and advocacy uh, vlog live stream easily. We could do an oops all news and advocacy every single week, but nobody would watch. N nobody would watch that. Nicotine suppository? Why not? Just take a, get like three or four snooze, you know, tie it up with some dental floss. Pop that right in the old poop chute. Nicotine up your ass for days. Nicotine off your ass for days. All right, guys. Uh, I'll put some links in the description to literally everything I talked about. Let's right now check in on the Super Chats. I don't know that I saw uh, many at all come in, but we'll get there. Uh, Bennett. 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 Oh, Bennett's got bad news. Bennett says, I just blew a radiator hose on my Kenworth on the I-17 just north of Phoenix. Ooh, Arizona. It's tough. It's tough. In Arizona, it's just the way I would describe Arizona is miles and miles of miles until you get to Phoenix. My mechanic said he'd be here in an hour. He randomly sent me a text that read, Tuning back into the vlog, send Nick 20 bucks. Oh, okay, shit. Yeah, Bennett. All right, well, listen, if your fictional radiator hose really blew, I hope I hope you get it fixed. And if not, if you need to bum, if you need to bum like 10 bucks, it's cool. I got you, Bennett. <laughs> I got you, bro. I got you. Uh, and then Ray Buildable says, uh, vaping makes you hate guar and makes you love tw Taylor Swift. Record scratch. Nope. It saves lives, damn it. <laughs> this news is unacceptable. Hail Odorous. Yeah. Hail Odorous for days. I, uh, yeah. I loved Odorous. Odorous was guar to me. He was guar. And here's the thing. Ray Buildable. I'm a Swifty. I've got no shame in that. I listened to, I've listened to guar and Taylor Swift on the same day. In the same car. Like within the same few hours. I've listened to Guar and Taylor Swift. You go from Guar to Taylor Swift to like cattle decapitation to like Billie Eilish, throw some K-pop in there, throw some uh, like true cult Norwegian black metal in there. I'm all over it. I'll listen to all of it. I give no Fs. <laughs> no Fs. Uh, Bennett, oh, he said, here's to match my other 10. I thought I'd send a dub with the last one, but when I'm a man of my word. I'm not backing out now. Much love, fam. Uh, this place is the only thing that keeps me from being a dual user. Bennett, I will always be your cheerleader. Put those cigarettes down, grab your vape, vape your face off. Unless, unless you really want a cigarette and then have a cigarette. Like I'm not going to be the boss of you. I've watched plenty of vapor smoke cigarettes. Doesn't even bother me in any capacity doesn't even bother me in any capacity. The way that I look at this now is it's not cigarette smoking versus vaping. It's we all recreationally consume nicotine. So now that the consumer has some sort of power, we can decide where we want to source our nicotine from. 
I can have it in a series box. I can have it in a pod. I can get it from snooze. I could get it from combustibles. I could smoke cigarettes. I could smoke cigars to get my nicotine, but I choose to not do that. So if you're a nicotine enthusiast like myself, you just choose where you get your cigarette. You choose where you get your nicotine from. And occasionally, sometimes you're going to choose a cigarette. I'd encourage you to not do that. But again, I'm not going to be the boss of you because if, as long as you're a free adult American, you get to decide what you put in your body. I've gone on this rant a thousand and a half times, but people are overly concerned with nicotine use. Like, why is it everybody's business how much nicotine I'm using? If I wasn't using nicotine and just uh, eating a Wendy's Baconator for every meal and drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels for every meal, nobody would stop me. Nobody would care. Wendy's wouldn't go, haven't you been in here a couple of times this week already? They go, no, what can I get you? Here it is. Would you like extra large fries with that? No one will judge you for that. I can do that every single day and no one will care. But the second that you mention, oh, well, I vape to get my nicotine, people are like, oh my God, what are you doing? You know, I heard that's way worse for you than cigarettes. Like, shut up, you eat fast food. Fast food and sugar are worse for you than nicotine. New Wave Dave said, hella chats. Yes, I will check in on those hella chats. There is a super secret hella chat link here New Wave Dave, surprised, surprised to see one from New Wave Dave over there who says, okay, my cat can also New Wave Dave, I appreciate you being the rebel and using the hella chats instead of the super chats because you're like, no, YouTube is getting none of my money. I'm giving $10 directly to Nick. And I really appreciate that, Dave. You, you should have. You should have a package like tomorrow for your birthday package. Just want you to know that. New Wave Dave says, uh, my cat came out of his room wearing a drill sergeant hat, yelling, saying, if I don't give you 10 bucks, that I looked like I came from the crack of my mama's you know what and ended up as a brown spot on her pantyhose. Whoa. That's super gross, bro. Super gross, New Wave Dave, but I'll take it. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you that you could avoid all of that. You could have you could avoid all of that just by throwing up a ten spot. Hey, listen, Dave. Same goes for you, New Wave Dave. If you ever need a ten spot, I got you. If you ever need a ten spot for some gas, you need a ten spot for a pack of smokes. <laughs> you need, you need a ten spot for some dip. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Bob. I'll open the discussion to this. I still smoke uh, premium hand-rolled cigars every now and again, and this week marked 10 years of vaping, 10 years not smoking cigarettes. Shit, yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I love that. You do you. Have a cigar. You want to have a cigar? Have a cigar. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares? Have a cigar. Life is short. Nicotine does help with stress. I'm planning on doing a whole video about mental health and nicotine. Uh, yeah, I think that was the la that last and one and only super hella chat that came in. One more hella chat. Let's see. Uh, I got some followers. I appreciate you, Soja, subscribing over there on uh, Twitch. Uh, and that's good. That's it. That's going to wrap up that. Let's get back to the super chats. Oh, there's too many. There's too many to handle. I appreciate you, New Wave Dave. The Great Seamus says, thoughts on the new Guar single, though? I haven't listened to it. I haven't listened to it. Can I listen to the beginning of it real quick and give you my thoughts? Is there really a new Guar single? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, let's mute these. Is there a new Guar single? Falling. Wait, is this just from the Battle, Battle Maximus? Oh, okay, this is, uh, is this what you're talking about? Yeah. I've heard this song before. It's not my favorite song, but uh, Battle Maximus. 
eh, it's like it's not their best work. Battle Maximus is one of the like legendary Guar albums because it was dedicated to their guitar player, Corey Smoot, who played Flatus Maximus. He died while they were on tour. And so when they got off of tour, they wrote Battle Maximus as like a tribute to Corey Smoot, who died. We didn't know it at the time, but that is also Odorous Urungus's last Guar record. So it's kind of like a pivotal album, you know? It's like it was dedicated to their guitar player who died, but really it, it's also kind of a tribute to Odorous because it was the last album he was on. It was the last album he was on. I don't know if that's their new, is that their new single? Yeah, latest release single. Like it's not their best work. Battle Maximus isn't my favorite album that Guar does. I like their top list though. Sick of You. Sick of You, Sadama Gogo, that's a great song. Immortal Corruptor is a great song. Salamanizer is a great song. Unfortunately, their cover of If You Want Blood is in their top tracks, and that just bothers me for some reason. There's so many better songs than that. Haven't given it a listen. I haven't really, uh, yeah, not, not, not super into it. Not, not super into it, Seamus. Jangles, aye, that's the Georgia boy. Hey, Nick, love you. Hey, Jangles, love you, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. We got a J Money Land Shark banger right there. Appreciate you, J Money Land Shark, because Nick told me to. Yeah, that's that guy. <laughs> that's that guy. Appreciate you, bro. Mike D says, uh, yo, yo, Empire Mod came in the mail today. Very stoked. Thanks for all you do and have done. Uh, it, it's my pleasure, Mike D. It's a labor of love. Really hope you dig that empire. Really hope you dig that empire. I can't see why you wouldn't. You know, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> But I hope you like it. Uh, Country Boy Drips. Hey, Grim, I just got here. Uh, uh, but I did have a few questions about the other patron stuff like Zooms and the other things and the nature of the IG account for the cool kids. Uh, Grim Green for president. Pass. Uh, how can I buy a cool kid pack with some Raz Rip? How can I buy a cool kid pack with some Raz Rip? Raz Rip? You're going to have to clue me in on that, country boy. Um, yeah, uh, Discord. If you're, a member, if you're on the Discord, it's connected through Patreon. So you can get connected to the Grim Green Discord through Patreon. Send an email to jeremyv at grimgreen.com. He will get you sorted out. He'll get you on the IG account. We do Monday streams and Wednesday streams on the Instagram account. And then we do Thursday vlog hangs, like post vlog hangs in the Discord uh, as well. And Jeremy V can get you all sorted out. As far as like a cool kid pack, I don't know. I'll say, I can I can get you out in the mail uh, like a, a cool kid exclusive sticker pack, but I don't know what Raz Rip is. <laughs> if you tell me what Raz Rip is, I'll definitely try my best to get it to you, you know? Uh, Dixon Cider Bush says, uh, I, I was on a job just about to unlock a door and my client asked, can you give Nick 11 bucks Canadian? The answer to that question, Dixon Ciderbush, is always yes. Always yes. I'll take that Canadian funny money. I'll take that 11 bucks Canadian. Was that, was that like four US dollars? Four or five US bucks? Something like that? I'm just kidding. The, the Canadian dollar is not that weak. Appreciate you, uh, appreciate you, Dixon. Appreciate you, Dixon Ciderbush. Hope, hope all is well in Canada. Hope to see you tonight. Gabe Claus. How long has it been since Gabe Claus's visit? Vaping is the only thing that got my reindeer off their five pack a day habit. Hashtag vaping saves reindeer. I guess I'm most surprised that the reindeer are cigarette smokers. Like, does it not take stamina and, 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 and breathing to, to get through the, the, the flight? You know, the, 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 the 24 hour long, you know, we're in the air landing on every single roof, you know, going door to door and roof to roof. I feel like that takes a lot of like cardiovascular health and a lot of, uh, and a lot of stamina, but I guess if they're cigarette smokers, it's a good thing they switched to vaping new wave Dave. Oh, you might need a 10 spot for weed. All right. You might need a 10 spot for weed. All right. Dude, just let me know. Just let me know if you're bankrupt and I got you 10 spot for some weed. Hell yeah. Uh, Bennett, that's very gracious of you. 
absolutely non-fictional radiator hose. Uh, <laughs> mechanic is here, hose replaced, topping off coolant, back on the road for this mother trucker. Uh, can't chat with 42,000 pounds behind me. I'm here though. Oh, Bennett, long haul trucker in the house. Welcome to the, welcome to the home of long haul truckers. I've heard, <laughs> Sam, that's fucking funny. Vaping Bogan. I love, reindeers love Swedish snooze. They do. I've heard that they like Swedish snooze. Although they get it from, uh, you know, the Arctic Circle. It's like Arctic Circle snooze. Arctic cir Circle snooze up there. Uh, and then we got one more from Bradley. It's 7 p.m. And we have so much to do. <laughs> Holy cow, we have so much to do. Uh, Bradley, we got one more. Uh, one more for the night. Uh, dad is late for work, PB&J sandwich. It's a DIY right up your alley, second best DIY juice behind mango sticky rice. Bradley, Bradley. That's a very bold statement to make right there. PB&J, look, I'll, send me the recipe. Send someone else the recipe. Send Addie Tooney the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll politely and kindly ask Addie Tooney to mix it up for me because I might be able to set up a pod. I might be able to install some coils. I might be, uh, you know, able to knock out the occasional alien coil, the occasional fuse clapped in, the occasional series fuse clapped in. Like, I'm an okay vapor, but DIY liquid is the one elusive thing that has just eluded me my entire life. I did some DIYing way back in the day, 2011, 2012, never really went anywhere. And the liquids I made were terrible. Simon, it's 3 a.m. in the UK. Let's get to sleep. Let's get to sleep. Yeah, fuck yeah, let's go truckers. Uh, my old band, uh, the Swamp Donkey, uh, we, uh, we wrote a song called 18 wheels that was just all about long haul trucking. <laughs> it was like, uh, just a, an homage to all the long haul truckers in the U S and, uh, it's a great song. It's a great song. 18 wheels rolling on second start of the right and straight till dawn. It's a great song. I, I, any, any long haul truckers in the house, let's go check out the swamp donkey, uh, long haul trucker. Um, guava jelly is delicious. You should go try it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm wasting time. Let's, uh, I, we need to get into mail. Retro vaping might get bumped tonight and we might just be getting straight into some hot, uh, vape mail action of which I have plentiful amounts. Yeah. I liked making liquid. I was just bad at it, you know, and it's just, it's, uh, you know, this was the days before recipes, before anybody was like DIYing anything. I bought some nicotine base and I just bought some random flavorings. I don't even remember where they came from. Loran's possibly. And I thought, well, I'm going to mix uh, strawberry. So I mixed like just strawberry liquid or strawberry flavoring into the base and I vaped it. And I was like, yeah, it kind of sucks. All right, what if I add some a uh, little bit of blueberry? And this was back when I was like measuring everything in drops. You know, things get measured now so that your recipes are, you know, precise and things like that. I was just counting drops. I would vape it, vape it, and I'd go, maybe it needs a little bit more blueberry. And I'd go, one, two, three, four, okay, five drops of blueberry. Seal that back up, shake my little 15 mil bottle drip it on my atomizer, vape it, go, oh, no, it's too much blueberry. Now it needs more, you know, now it needs more marshmallow. So I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six drops of marshmallow. Okay, shake that up, vape it again. That was my trial and error. And it never worked out, never worked out. Okay, I'm sorry, was that too loud? I apologize. We're going to get into some vape mail right now. Uh, the segment is vape mail, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, everything is a vape related thing. Well, too many barcodes on this. Is there any barcodes there that YouTube will get mad at me at? 
mad at me about. I love, like, I can't. Oh, here it is, here it is. This is my, my good box cutting knife, you know? Cut towards your vital organs every time. This is uh, obviously from UL, if you didn't see the, the branding there. All right. And I don't know. Are we taking bets? Is it another Cali burn? Is it another Cali burn? I was actually correct. It's another. I was joking that this is another Cali burn, but it is another Cali burn. It looks to be A3 compatible. It's the A. Z3, the Caliburn A3Z. Wow, literature and everything, literature and everything. I'll tell you what, it's an interesting uh, shape. I would like to set this up, but I, you know, I kind of would like to set it up on a YouTube video so that it could be part of the review. Maybe I can use this vlog clip as the beginning of the review, which I've never done before. Should we do it right now? <clears throat> All right. Yeah, there it is. What's up, everybody? Grim Green back here. Today, we're starting our review live on the vlog of the Caliburn G Z. What the shit is this? The GZ2 pod, the GZ2, which fingers crossed. Okay, okay. So they're going all in on the uh, the GK2 coil heads. These are G2 coil heads in a G2 pod in another battery shape. That's what's going on right now. Flat side, round side. Where's my guava jelly? I'm down to, uh, I just got a shipment of this and I'm down to my, the last three bottles of guava jelly, just cranking through it like crazy. Just gonna fill up this little pod. It's just a G2 pod. It's the G2 GK2 pod inside of a slightly different-ish looking battery. It's kind of uh, chunky. It's a chunky little thing. USB-C on the bottom. There's a little window so I can see the liquid that says Zia something on there. It's a chorky little guy. It's just a little thing. We got a lanyard, a lanyard holder. The weight of it, honestly, pretty nice. It feels, uh, I mean, it, it almost feels comparable to like the stick size of this. All right, well, uh, let's have an inaugural toot here. Cheers to you. Hey, vapes like exactly like I would expect a Caliburn GK2 to vape. Which is to say it's fine. There's a little LED on the side. I'm sure you can see. Pretty slick. That's a slick LED that you don't get to see when you're vaping it. Crackle's good, flavor's good. I kind of oddly really like this little chunky square size. It's like kind of a cocoa, but not quite a cocoa, but they kind of want it to be maybe like the new cocoa. I like the little liquid window. I like that you can see your liquid in there. I'm not necessarily looking forward to the weeping liquid that comes out of these GK2 coil heads, but here's the thing, listen. T today is day one. This is a pod review, so I go for longevity. So I'm going to start using this. I'll catch up with you when I catch up with you. And scene. That's how we do it. That's how we start a review in the vlog. First ever. First ever. There is also a squatty little Cali burn as well that I may not set up right at this exact moment. But it's a squatty little Cali burn. 
Oh, it's the same. What the hell is happening? This is two different products you're telling me right now? Oh, I see what they did. So the one that I opened is for the GK2 pods, the G2 pods, because it's the GZ2. This is the AZ3, which means it's compatible. It's compatible with the AK3 coil heads. Wow. So regardless of what you've stocked up on, even if it's, no, A2S coil heads won't fit in here. Only A3S coil heads will fit in here and only G coil heads will fit in this one. It's gotta be a personal preference thing, right? Just depends on which one you like more. Look at this thing. It's got that old Caliburn styling on it. Old stripey Caliburn styling on it. Airflow, can't still read what that says. Zia, Zia, sure, Caliburn, sure. USB-C on the bottom, same little size guy. It's honestly, like I've not experienced this size before. It's kind of growing on me a little bit. All right, well, that review is officially started. Actually, that's I got double work done right there. I can edit that right at the beginning of a video. Uh, this came from Amazon, and I did not order anything from Amazon, and it says Grim Green on it, which... <gasps> oh! Anthony Ramella, Anthony Ramella, he's a hell of a fella. Anthony Ramella, Anthony Ramella, he bought me garbage bags. Um, oh, see, I thought it smelled good. Anthony Ramella, he's a hell of a guy. He keeps me stocked up on lavender vanilla scented garbage bags. I just love the lavender vanilla scented garbage bags. Even the box smells good. It smells like fresh laundry or something. I use them every week, week after week. Makes my office smell a little bit nicer. Makes the whole trash experience a little bit nicer. Thank you, Anthony Ramella. Thank you. Uh, there's uh, But wait, there's more. Oh, shit, Tim. An advocate for liberty. Yeah, buddy. Hell yeah, buddy. Oh my God. Dude, this is rad. So the backstory here, Tim, did, I hope you kept some for yourself. Here are the 12 30 mil bottles of Amatorium Glamour mixed up on 529.23. So they should be steeped and ready around 623.23. Remember, you need to grow a beard to play Santa. Okay. Um, our not so little bunny Ashley turns one on July 2nd. And although she doesn't make us watch blow some O's every day, like the other bunny did, she does watch the vlog with us. <laughs> you guys, I love the idea of animals watching the vlog. A, a years ago, I'd get pictures of people and their dogs were watching the, watching the vlog. Now there's bunnies watching the vlog. This is great, Tim. You're a hell of a guy. Say hi to Casey, the puppies, and Couch Guy. Whoever Couch Guy is. For us, love you, brother. The Liberties. Tim, Cassie, Ashley. I love the Liberties. I, I love you guys. P.S. Those that submitted liquids for the Kinder Bar Challenge have been asking if you're going to test them soon. Yes, I am going to test them soon. Uh, it's it's in my schedule of vlog things that, that are going to happen, that are going to happen on the stream. There was a, Tim held a little... Kinder Bueno contest and I got some Kinder Bueno submissions and uh, I would like to taste all of them together, maybe even with some Kinder Buenos, but I had, Tim, I hope you kept some. Did you keep some at least? And let me reimburse you for these bottles. Let me reimburse you for these bottles, but I got some Amatorium Glamour concentrates and I sent one of the bottles of concentrates to Tim for him to make you know, some for himself as well as, you know, some for everybody else. 
And now we have a whole mess of 30 mil bottles, three milligrammed up. These are just for the yo-yos, you know? I'd love to send one to everybody, but these are just going into boosh boxes. Uh, I love it, Tim. Thank you. This liquid rules my life. It's, it's delicious beyond words, and I want as many people to try it as they possibly can. And please, Tim, tell me that you kept a few bottles. Please tell me. Please tell me, okay? What happened to Shniko? Shniko's still around. Shniko rules. She's the best dog that's ever existed. She's the best, the best dog that's ever existed. I got this from my dentist. It's a green Colgate toothbrush. Yeah, 360 clean. It's a soft head. You know, it's the soft bristles. My dentist said, uh, all you ever need is a soft bristle toothbrush. You don't need like really stiff, hard bristles. It just is bad for your enamel and bad for your gums. So I said, okay, okay. The LEDs on this are kind of worth the price of admission. Look how cool those look. That's slick. That's slick. That's just slick. It's just slick as hell. Um, Let's get, I'm gonna save that one for last. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save tribal Buddhas for last. I'm gonna save tribal Buddhas for last. We're gonna open this one next. That glamor, that raspberry ripple rules, rules. Um, those will be getting, uh, you know, given away on my uh, Wednesday patron vlog. No idea. Couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. Oh, look at this. Vapresso. Fun with innovation now. Fun with innovation now. Soft throat people use soft bristle toothbrushes. Yeah, that tracks. That tracks, Jangles. That tracks. Don't know what's going on in here, but we're gonna find out. Oh, some things fell off. Oh, that's okay. And I'm missing something else. What a fancy box. Oh, dude, these are sick. So Vapresso is doing a bunch of stuff with the Cross 3. We got some, we got some Cross 3 Nanos with like, you know, art on them. Art, that's art. You can't look at that and tell me that's not art. Here's the third one, art, art. In fact, in the not too distant future, if none of these are speaking to you, I kind of like this one because it's the most messed up. It looks like something Patrick Conquest would have drawn or Patrick Conquest or Odorous Urungus would have drawn this. Um, I love the Cross 3 Nano. I, I'm a huge fan of this device and these coil heads. And they're experimenting with some art and the such as. In fact, Matt Cully, Sam the Vaping Bogan, and myself. Okay, that box is cool. It just raises up. I just want to keep doing it. Uh, Vaporesso got with us and uh, we put our own art and you know whatever graphics we wanted on a cross three nano and they should be coming out pretty soon picasso makes vapes now did you see that it is a little picasso-y especially this one especially this one i'm going to use this one where's my cross three? Oh, it's in the living room damn it all right well that's fine i was going to use it was, but now I'm not. Oh. And then we have the freaking this is the this is the tribal Buddha box. You're expecting it to be to be small? Nope. It's a tribal Buddha box. So of course it's going to be gigantic. Of course. 
That's just the way he rolls, man. Big vapes. Big ideas. All right. Big vapes, big boxes. Remember, cut towards your vital organs. That's the way to go. Tribal Buddha and the Blue Buddha tinctures, you know, they always, you always go over the top. You always go over the top. Oh, there's some literature. Oh, good. Oh, beer. Oh, happy beer. Uh, enclosed is the beer. I think you'll dig this selection I have made for you. The juice I made is creamy pistachio black honey tobacco. That immediately sounds like something I'm into, uh, which I just felt fit you perfectly. Yep. Hence why I named it Grim Green. Fuck yeah. I enclosed a Voorhees custom slimline click felt mech boro for you. Click felt equal. Oh, click fat equals five clicks on and off. Oh, oh, I really like the feel of this one and wanted to give it and wanted you to give it a go. No worries. I have another one. Oh, Steve, live long uh, and live strong, brother. Steve, a.k.a. Tribal Buddha, hashtag Blue Buddha Tinctures over there on the Instagram, I believe. Look, you don't have to. I'll, I can look. I feel bad now taking your, your click fat. But the first thing we have to get out of here is beer. Yeah. Stuck on a few things. That's okay. I'm going to put that here. I'm going to put this here. going to go like this and like this and like this. This is some securely wrapped beer. Aha! And we have Slush Punch Imperial Sour Ale. Boosh, dig it. Slush punch. We got, uh, holy shit. That's sick. That's sick. That's sick, Tribal Buddha. That's sick. Ooh, this is a good beer. Zombie Dust. Zombie Dust is a very, very, very highly rated IPA. I remember that from back in the day. Then what do we got here? Uh, it's not normal. We got uh, zombie ice. Oh, double pale ale. Zombie ice from Three Floyds. How do you get? How do you score so much Three Floyd stuff? Oh my God! How can I drink this? I can't drink this. Limited edition ACDC Highway to Hell beer. I can't drink that. It says limited edition on it, dude. Yeah, this is probably the best six pack I've ever received. Highway to Hell, ACDC's Highway to Hell, Hell's Lager. One point limited edition beverage series. I feel like I can't drink that ever. And then we got uh, Raspberry Beret, barrel aged fruit sour. Boom right there. Look at that six pack. Look, you look at that six pack. Is this just uh is this just packing foam? Is this just foam? Looks like a little guy. Okay. I don't, you know, don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss anything. There it is. Here's the here's the liquids. It's the Grim Green. It's the Grim Green. Sold. I'll take it. Oh, the camera's down here. Boosh. Boosh. And then another boosh is this Boro. Oh, damn. That is nice. Oh, that's real nice. Pow. 3D printed. Click FET, one, two, three, four, five, on, off. It's got the side to side boro. This, I mean, I don't think it's going to replace this, but 
I mean, it's a little bit bigger, you know. I love the size of this thing, but it is, it is, it does have that exposed battery. You know, we could put the vape shell with an 18650 in this. Tribal Buddha, does this have a name or is it just a click fet? Click fet? Just keep the can like I did, yeah. I can't ever drink this ACDC beer. I might like to drink the Misfits beer, but I don't feel like I can't drink either of these. <laughs> Zombie dust all day. Zombie dust for sure. Oh, and you sent me some Voorhees. Z -z -z -z. And a good coily tool. All right. Thank you, Tribal Buddha. You're the real MVP. And some 21700 battery wraps? Wow. You are the real MVP. Dude, thank you. Steve, thank you. Just click fat. It's just called the click fat. Damn. P Tribal Buddha, you're winning the package game right now. Winning the package game. I'm excited about this. And I don't even like... The 3D printing has a like a texture to it that I like the way that it feels. Click fat. All right, shit. I might have to... See, I've done no packing for my trip this weekend. Zero packing. I've got nothing ready to go. I don't know what vapes I'm bringing. I don't know anything that's happening. Don't know anything that's happening. But, you know, maybe I'll take that click fet. I was planning on taking this little guy. I was planning on taking this with me. Because it's so cool. We'll see. We'll see click fet. I use coily tools. I use them every once in a while, you know. I, I, every once in a while. I'll do something properly. I'll measure coil leads. Just last night on the stream with Bogan, I was talking about how all I do is eyeball things and guess. <laughs> all I do is eyeball things and guess. I'm like, oh, how long? How far? Yeah, we'll just guess. I'll just eyeball it. I'll just eyeball it. Story of my life story of my eyeball in life all right let's take a quick vape break here all right nicely done damn hell ass good mail they, every package was a banger package we got new cross threes we got lavender vanilla garbage bags we have a mess of amortorium <laughs> get excited cool kids get excited the next let's see one two three four five six there's six in each all right the next 12 boosh boxes that we do are going to contain some amortorium glamour no questions asked tim again i really hope you kept some for yourself i really hope you kept some for yourself i love you too Ern. i love you too man and on top of all of that, freaking delicious. I think that's going to wrap it up. That's going to wrap it up for vape mail. Um, shit. Let's, let's do some very random liquid tasting. We're going to have to bump retro vaping till next week, which is fine, which is fine. I don't mind bumping retro vaping until next week, but we are going to end this with a very, very, very random liquid tasting right after I check in on the super chats. I don't know if any came in. You do need it, Patrick Conquest. I agree. You do need it. Is you were the you were literally the first person I thought of. You know why? Is because it looks like a built to spill album cover or something. It's got like weird messed up eye art on it. There's like four eyeballs and a nose and then another nose on top. And then these weird kidney bean shapes. It looks like immediately looks like it came off that built to spill record immediately. I agree, Patrick, you and I are on the same page. Don't even trip dog. Don't even trip. So here's the thing. Let's check on the super chats real quick. Not sure any came in. That's okay. Uh, we had Bradley. Uh, we had New Wave Dave. Oh, Dave. Sharing the love, man. P 
preaching love. Uh, did I mention that I love everyone in the chat? Everyone, everyone, even Valerian Steele. Really? <laughs> even Richard? You like Richard? I'm just kidding. We love Richard. I love Richard. I love Valerian Steele. Uh, it might not truly be random, Kent. It might not truly, truly be random, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. I appreciate you guys voting. We'll do a Star Wars giveaway soon. We'll do another Star Wars giveaway soon. Um, maybe we should do another one tonight. Maybe we'll end this with a Star Wars giveaway. Oh, my God. I got a very, very good text message. Um, yeah, let's do a random liquid tasting. Even drip theory, Dave. Even drip theory. Like, look, I'm, I'm cool with drip theory. I like drip theory just fine. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cool with drip theory. We're pretty tight. I had some drip theory coils set aside for the retro vaping, but uh, we're not going to get there yet. Random liquid tasting. Hashtag random liquid tasting and then and then we'll do one last uh, one last Star Wars giveaway. One last Star Wars giveaway. It's gonna be a good one. Country boy, how you doing, country boy? Raspberry Ripple three milligram and some three millimeter coils. I'll pay. That's what I was talking about. Boosh boxes or however you want to do it. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, dude. Here's the thing. Boosh boxes, you know, I don't just hand them out willy nilly. I don't just hand them out willy nilly. Every Wednesday at 4 30 p.m. I stream on my super secret Instagram account. Uh, we have some shed time. We have a, some discussions. And then inevitably about, I don't know, an hour in, usually around 5, 5 p.m. E, uh, West Coast time, we'll just do, we'll do some Boosh Box giveaways. Sometimes it's guess the song. Sometimes it's guess the movie that the song is from. Most of the time lately, it's been a random number generator because I feel like that's pretty fair. Um, but we do like three or four boosh boxes every single week, almost every single week. There's been a few weeks where we've skipped it, but for the most part, every Wednesday is the boosh box giveaway stream. If you want to lay some claim to uh, raspberry ripple, I will make a mental note that country boy is after some raspberry ripple. You just need to put that out into the universe. Cause then you can, act, then you'll win the boosh box giveaway on Instagram. You'll just win it. I've been giving away type twos like crazy. Kent sent a bunch of uh, leftover type twos. I think that he had like overstock. And so people have been getting type two RTAs. Anyway, uh, one more uh, super chat from the fishy soft bristles for a soft throat. Oh, you're hilarious. More seat belt, more seat belt, soft seat belt for a soft bristles, soft throat guy, old soft throat grim. That's what they call me. Actually, nobody calls me that. Let's, uh, let's, let's do a very random liquid tasting. Let's do a very random liquid tasting. I think this is going to be a good one tonight. I think this is going to be a good one. Random liquid tasting. Uh, we're going to do, uh, let's see. Whoop, whoop. Nope, sorry, just hit a weird random button and made my whole software freak out. Then lastly, okay, let's get voting on that. Uh, let's get voting, please. Sorry that that was so hyper crazy loud. I apologize, that probably destroyed some headphones and I apologize. But the vaping music is on. Peace out, Simon. Have a good night. Have a good night, Simon. Hey, love you, Simon. Love you. Vote. Please vote. Uh, your choices are thusly. Whoa. Okay. Go away. 
Why did that happen? That was weird. Okay, so our choices are thusly. The Ritual's Dragon Passion. Sam, the vaping bogan, has done nothing but talk, talk speak so highly of this liquid. And here it is. We got these last week from Big Five, Big V, Big Five Juice Co. Buffalo, white grape, pineapple. What? White grape, pineapple? And then lastly, this one's been trying to get into the random liquid tasting for a while. Luscious, uh, banana butterscotch custard. These are our selections tonight. Please vote, just vote right now. Keep voting. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote funky. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote funky. It's a if you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote funky. Da, 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 da. It's a celebrate. If you don't vote today, if you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote funky. If you don't vote right now, then we're not gonna taste any of these. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. Seen banana? Just clicked it. Yeah. Look, honestly, I'm, I'd be happy to try any of these. All of these sound good. Dragon Passion, White Grape Pineapple. Like, how good does White Grape Pineapple sound? Also, Banana Butterscotch Custard. Like, what's not to love about Banana Butterscotch Custard? That's crazy. It's crazy talk, man. Lush Banana Butterscotch uh, taking a healthy lead at the moment. These two are falling a little bit behind with this being a little bit higher. And then the big V falling behind. You know, that's okay. We'll get there. Eventually, we're going to taste hopefully every liquid that exists in, in my office. But Luscious is ahead. Everyone keep voting. We need to get to at least, uh, I don't know, 150 votes, 160 votes, something like that. 150 votes, yeah. Oh, thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Uh, it's years of practice. Years of practice uh, uh, of singing Guar songs and getting down like his phrasing and the way that he says words and his whole like... Uh, is it? It's. I don't know if it's exactly an exotic uh, pineapple. <laughs> Ray, I don't know if it's an exotic pineapple. It doesn't specify. It just says white grape pineapple. It could be an exotic pineapple. I don't know how exotic we're going to get. I don't know how exotic we're getting on this pineapple. Could be an exotic pineapple. I'm just going to have a vape break. Please keep voting. Vote, vote, vote. Vote your hopes. You know, I've done Oops All Liquid Tastings in the past, and we end up only doing like three, which is better than, I don't think anything's going to be butterscotch, right? I think luscious butterscotch, banana butterscotch custard is the clear winner. Big V and the rituals are duking it out. Duking it out. But Luscious, I think, is going to win. Man, nobody wanted the white grape pineapple? How do you know what white grape pineapple? Oh, that sounds amazing. But, uh, you know, this is a democracy, damn it. And so we go by what the popular vote is. Luscious, banana butterscotch. I don't even think there's a second place. Big V and the Rituals are almost exactly tied. Almost exactly tied. So, we're going with Luscious. Yeah, here it is. Uh, that means I need some nicotine. This needs two, right? This needs two. Everybody go buy one of these. The short fill cap openers, and they're lifesavers. Lifesavers. <laughs> I mean, sometimes they're lifesavers. Yeah, they are.
so this is, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 18 milligram, it's gonna take two of these. Yeah, perfect. Perfection's been achieved. Go. I'll do a little fancy here. You know, restaurant style. That's what they call that. Restaurant style. Some flair bartending here for you. I'll juggle these later, you know. <laughs> what kills me is this is like, this is the way that the EU with the TPD, they're like, this is the best way for people to vape. This is the best way. Our regulations are going to be so that consumers will buy raw nicotine and mix it themselves. Oh, well, isn't this normally done in like a laboratory, like a lab environment, like clean room, ISO, lab environment, and skilled professionals add nicotine to the liquid? Oh, yeah, but we'd rather have the consumer do it. We'd rather have the consumer do it. Okay, well, that makes no sense, but thanks for playing. Let's just shake this up. This thing, and it's even like, it's, it's beveled right here, so it can really like, it's sharp. It gets under those little caps, and there's a little cutout for like the nozzle to go through. And plus it looks like a little stormtrooper head kinda. You know, it's got like that stormtrooper head shape. Short fill adapters, short fill openers. It's the best, best one of the best vape things I've ever owned, ever used. I'm just shaking, you know, just shaking. You gotta shake. Oh, that's right, you have to look directly in the camera while you shake. From what I understand, Fresh 03, that's what he says. Does DIY or Die do that? Does Wayne do that? Uh, these are, no, it doesn't come with nicotine. In the UK, in the U European Union, the EU, because of the TPD, the Tobacco Products Directive, um, they regulated that e-liquid containing nicotine, the maximum size that it can come in is 10 mils. So, as the workaround that literally everybody does, it's like industry standard, is short fills. So we get big bottles of just flavoring PG and VG, it's zero nicotine, and then you add nick shots to it to get to your desired nick level. So this is 100 mils, so I put two nick shots, two 18 milligram nick shots in here, which is gonna be a little over three milligram. I think it's like three and a half, four milligram or something like that. But that's just the way they do it. That's just the way they do it in the UK. Michael, right here. Look at me, dog. Look at me. Did you ever see that Key and Peele skit? That's fucking hilarious. I'm not even going to try to re recreate it. So funny. DIY what? How can he even call himself a DIY liquid mixer if he doesn't shake it while making eye contact with the camera? That's crazy. Why would you be ashamed of that, Wayne? That's messed up. Okay, I think we're mixed. <laughs> I, I think we're pretty mixed up here. <whistles> Smells good. Let's give it a knuckle. Holy crap on a crutch. Banana, butterscotch, custard. We're gonna be tasting it today. It's a Cabello. It's a Cabello on top of the Ar Argus MT. I don't know why I grabbed this out. I just thought it would be cool. Got a fresh, sick uh, single coil in there. It's not going to focus on it, but you know what a single coil looks like. Freshly wicked. Now, we're abiding by the rules of the liquid tasting where if I enjoy this uh, enough, I'll, I'll, I'll fill the cabello with it. If it's not for me, it might not go in the cabello. But if it is for me... It will go in the Cabello. Mm. 
Is it three milligram? Does that come up to three milligram? 3.3 milligram? Yeah, that sounds about right. That tracks. Yeah, credit always goes to Fresh. F fresh 03, 100%. Uh, I do still have Randall. Uh, if you're talking about the Axis Vapes M17, I definitely still have two of them. They're both uh, super dead, though. And Axis Vapes doesn't exist anymore, and I can't get replacement lipos for it. So they just kind of sit and look pretty. They just kind of sit and look pretty. Oops. My cabio. All right. Uh, the airflow is <sighs> this one, that one, right? Nope. There it is. Nope. What the crap? <laughs> this is insane. Ah, oh, come on, Cabello. On. Ah. Ah. I vape. You know, I vape. I vape often. That's the airflow I'm looking for. I just want one airflow hole. I don't like the Cabello with dual airflows. I just like it with one airflow right over the coil. Boosh 9000. All right. Uh, was the music way too loud? Is the music way too loud? Let's have an inaugural toot here. Lussius Banana Butterscotch Custard. Uh, I'm just going to sit with this real quick. Uh, I'm going to mute my microphone. I'm going to vape it for a little bit. I'll come back, give you my thoughts. Okay, 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 okay. You be quiet, seventh floor tango. Wow. Okay, wow. Let me... Wow. Wow. This is, this is good. This is good. This is... 
good. What I take, <laughs> what I taste when I vape it is one very cohesive flavor. It's banana butterscotch custard. It, it, it's exactly like it says. What I picture is not necessarily bananas and butterscotch in custard. What I picture is a custard that is banana flavored, like a banana flavored custard with like butterscotch something on top, like butterscotch goo or, or butterscotch jelly or something on top. The, it's creamy beyond reason. It's creamy and banana custard and butterscotch on top. Super cohesive flavor. It's the same going in as it is coming out. It's a little bit throaty, you know? That's old soft throat Grimm's kicking in. Here's the thing. It's a little throaty. It's a little throaty. It's a, it's a little bit throaty. I like it a lot. And I think it's going to go in this Cabello. I think it's going to get the approval and go in the Cabello. Let's put some liquid on. Oops. Remember, it's okay to lick liquid. We're going to put it in the Cabello. We're going to let this do its wicking action. Uh, I really like this liquid. I'm going to put up with the throatiness of it because it is a little throaty. And I don't know if that throatiness is coming from the Cabello or if it's coming from uh, maybe the fact that there's no airflow open. Oh, that is open. Okay. I'm an idiot. Let's put this back on. It's throaty. It's, it's th butterscotch drizzle. Oh, there it is. Banana custard, butterscotch drizzle on top. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful flavor. I'm banana fan 99 uh, at gmail.org and I love bananas. I will gravitate towards bananas. I love a good banana flavor. Uh, she used to rock banana root beer. Remember that? Sifu Mustache. Sifu Mustache isn't here. Sifu Mustache makes a, a banana root beer that rules ass. It rules ass. It's a little throaty on the exhale. It's a little throaty on the exhale. That's what I'd say. It's a little throaty on the exhale. but I'm getting a rad crackle from this coil in here. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but listen. It's a deep rumbly crackle. I'm vaping it too fast. My Cabello hasn't caught up yet. The Cabello hasn't caught up. It's okay. It will. That's the thing. It will catch up. Liquid has to start moving around in there. Uh, holy crap. Luscious is batting like two for two. Both luscious liquids we've tried have been amazing. This one, holy cow. I mean, holy cow. Banana, banana butterscotch custard is really hitting with me. It's, it's everything I like. In fact, it tastes very similar to a liquid that my buddy John used to DIY for me. My buddy, John, John, he would DIY me. We just used to call it diacetyl banana. And it was like this. It was like a bakery banana butterscotch custard type of flavor with just a bunch of diacetyl in it. And I loved it. And he would make me like big, like 300, 400 mil bottles of this. Uh, of, we called it diacetyl banana. This is giving me very strong diacetyl banana vibes. It's, I don't, it's not the banana specifically that's throaty dog soup. <laughs> it's not the, it's not the banana specifically. Sorry. Custard. Custard. Sorry. Custard. Need it to sit overnight and that'll calm down. You think that'll calm down the nicotine? That very well could be. It is also salt nicotine, which does kind of hit me sideways sometimes. Does kind of just hit me sideways sometimes. Um, 
the only time it's throaty is on the exhale though. And if I, it's, it's only throaty if I try to exhale too quickly. This slaps. This is good. This is fire. This is uh, on point. No cap. True facts. Legit good shit. Tastes like banana butterscotch custard. Custard. I think Todd, if I'm not mistaken, was a Grant's vanilla custard guy. I think he was into the Grant's vanilla custard as well. I mean, I just want to keep vaping it. I don't think my Cabello is keeping up as well as I want it to. Just can't, can't chain vape the Cabello. Could also have to do with my not amazing wicking of this. Oh my God. Everything's coming together. The flavor on the Cabello slaps. That crackle, this liquid, I, I love it. I love everything about this right now. It, it's actually getting less throaty as I vape it. Yeah. We, Brandon, you're Brian. Sorry, Brian. Brian. Yeah, I think I'm going to let it steep. I think I'm going to let it steep up. I think I'm gonna let it steep up, let that sit for a little bit with the nicotine in it. But but this is like I don't want to stop. It's busting, yeah, busting, 100% busting. Jangles, yeah, uh, it's 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 hyper levels of crackle, and uh, I can't get enough. Throat. That was the throaty. Uh, I don't know if it's sick as tits, you know. Uh, if it was in an RDTA, it might be sick as tits. Sick, sick, sick as tits. Sick, sick, sick as tits. Remember when he did that? Remember when Rip Trippers did that? Sick, sick, sick as tits. I was like, okay. Slow down, Rip Trippers. Someone needs to hand Rip Trippers like a big indica joint and just go, here, just calm down. Will you calm down a little bit? Have you tried this, Bogan? Sam, have you tried this? That luscious is luscious. They ain't messing around. That shit is luscious. That's the end of the beer. It's 8 p.m. This is uh, officially three and a half hours long right now. So, do we want to do one last Star Wars giveaway? Like one last Star Wars giveaway, right? We might as well do it. Let's just go. Let's just do this. Let me get over to my inbox. Delete all of the... Yeah! Kevin K. It will be going to a very gracious Star Wars fan. Hell yeah, Kevin K. I'm so glad it's going to you. I am pumped. Pumped that it's going to Kevin K. Uh, I don't want to delete your email, though, there, Kevin. Might have just deleted your email right there. All right, let's undo that. Uh, Kevin, where did you go? Kevin, I mean. Okay, okay, there he is. There's Kevin. All right, we'll delete, we'll delete everything but Kevin. Star Wars Rogue One. Look, there was some, uh, there was some good. The Rise of Skywalker, Voorhees. The Rise of Skywalker. The... Kevin Chocolate, The Rise of Skywalker. Get out of here with that Rise of Skywalker. I mean, anybody can like whatever they like, but I will eternally trash The, the Rise of Skywalker. Okay, inbox is cleared. Let's, uh, let's write down the second uh, trivia contest. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. You know, uh, I look forward to vlog day. I just do. There's no way around it. And uh, I, I have a fantastic time every night. Fantastic. Um, okay, let's see. This question. Yeah. 
You remember the, uh, did, was anybody here for the five minute hold screen? They're all going to be Star Wars related questions, obviously. Okay. So the, the, the prize, the prize, the prize, you guys, the prize, uh, it's another, uh, it's another big one. It's another uh, Empire Strikes Back themed uh, set. This is a difficult one to part with as well. This one's pretty severely difficult to part with because it it just looks so cool. But it's uh it, it's it's Luke Skywalker versus the Wampa. Wampa? Are you kidding me? Have you ever had a Wampa figure? Well, they exist. Star Wars Collector Series, Luke Skywalker versus the Wampa. I'm not sure if you see what you get in there, but that's Luke Skywalker's blaster. That's Luke Skywalker's uh, lightsaber. There's a little like, uh, you know, his binoculars, his binoculars from uh, when he's on the Tauntaun. It's old. You can see the yellow, like, like weathering on the wampa the wampa wasn't always yellow right there that's just from age that's just from age and not being like hermetically sealed into plastic this is up this is what the prize is so star wars fans i want this to go to a really good star wars home you know i just want it i want it to be in someone's house and have them love it and have them look at it and go fuck yeah star wars I love this. It's a little bit dusty, you know, because it's been, uh, this was in my office very briefly as well. I had these two side by side in my office and I loved them and I loved looking at them, but it's time to purge and it's time to make room in my house for things that aren't a gigantic Star Wars collection. So with that said, this is the prize. Luke Skywalker versus the Wampa. You get the whole story on the back. The Wampa is an ice creature uh, that is a horrible carnivorous beast that roams the frozen wastelands of the planet Hoth. Standing more than two meters tall, this bipedal Wampa has yellow eyes and very sharp claws and teeth. Because of its white fur, the Wampa is naturally camouflaged, which makes it easy to take its prey by surprise. Wampas do not hunt when they are hungry, but save their living prey in ice caves for later consumption. Did you know that? Did you know that about Wampa? These fearless beasts carve layers out of ice, uh, forming huge caves in which to nest in. Luke Skywalker, while patrolling the snow-packed tundra of Hoth, narrowly escaped a Wampa by severing its arm with a lightsaber. I think we all remember that. Authentically styled straight from the Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker features his highly detailed uniform complete with lightsaber, removable holster, rebel blaster, and comm link. It also includes the Wampa Ice Creature, the special edition set available for the first time ever. The first time ever. Wampa and Luke Skywalker. So, get your typing fingers ready to send me an email our Ewoks are carnivores. I learned that. That's terrifying. S get ready to send some emails. Does everybody remember the five-minute hold screen? The five-minute hold screen is a clue as to what the answer is to this question. For every time Grim Waste Cotton, another Wampa is created. <laughs> another Wampa kills a human. Another Wampa kills a Tauntaun. So... Is the arm detachable? Uh, I don't know. I can't imagine that it is, but it might be. He doesn't look very menacing, though. He looks like a big, poofy, poof guy. I'm sure you could pose him in, like, a menacing position, but he just doesn't look menacing. Uh, this is where we're sending the email. Thank you, Addy Tooney.
Think back. Think back. How many Star Wars things are hanging in my office? How many Star Wars things are hanging in my office? Contest at GrimGreen.com. Email me in your subject. Just put the number of how many Star Wars things are hanging in my office. There's a clue or one right here. One right here. Uh, one of these records, I think, is, uh, you know, I know the answer, but I'm not trying to, you know. Good night, Kent. I love you, man. I miss you. Hope you're doing hope you're doing good. Make some more AI stuff. I know you will. How many Star Wars things are hanging in my office? How many? How many things? How many Star Wars things? I'll tell you, it's less than you think. It's less than you think, but I think more than a normal person would have. That's that's the only clue I'm going to give you. How many Star Wars things are hanging in my office, there was a whole five minute hold screen of just nothing but my office. So I feel like that could have been a dead giveaway. Let's see, get those answers in. The first correct answer, the first correct answer will win. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to answer some of these uh, super chats. The dude under your bed says, your old caramelized banana flavor was originally got me off six, uh, off SIGs, my ADV in the Nautilus Mini for years. Let me tell you that this gives me strong caramelized banana vibes. Strong caramelized banana vibes. It's even throaty in a similar way that I think caramelized bananas was throaty. It's better than caramelized bananas. But that's awesome, the dude. That's awesome. I, that brings me so much joy that caramelized banana was the flavor that got you off SIGs. That just brings me a lot of joy. That makes me very grateful. I appreciate that. New Wave Dave says, diacetyl me till my junk falls off. Hell yeah. I think we should be allowed to have diacetyl. I don't know why we self-regulated it out of our liquids. I mean, I know why we self-regulated it out of our liquids, but... Give me some diacetyl. Give me diacetyl all day long. Uh, Jangles always correcting me. You're, you're actually wrong, Jangles. It's busting. <laughs> busting. It's, it is busting. But to me, it's busting. Tribal Buddha says, Sam missed the beers. Show them to him right quick. He asks, oh, yeah, yeah. There's some beers. ACDC beer, the highway to hell. What up now? Misfits, Sam, if you're still here, Fiend Lager. We got some uh, Slush Punch. We got some Raspberry Beret, Barrel Aged Fruited Sour. We've got the infamous Zombie Dust. I don't know if you've ever had Zombie Dust from Three Floyds, but this beer slaps. And we got some uh, Zombie Ice from Three Floyds as well. Never had this one. Of course, I can never drink these two beers, right? Like, that's just a rule. That's just a rule that I can't drink those two beers. I think it's a rule. I think I can't vape those two beers. All right. Let me go check in on the uh, contest. The first correct answer is the winner. Let's go back to the beginning here. Um, it's not nine. It's not seven, it's not four, not five, not 42, but that's a good good guess. It's not 14, it's not six, not eight, not 13, not five, not 18, not 21, not six, not six, not seven, not 13, not six, not 29, not 12. Although 12 is pretty close. It's not five, it's not 13, not seven, not seven, not seven, not four, not nine, not nine, not nine. You're so close. Holy cow, you're so close there. It's not three, it's not six, all of them. Okay, Ern, put everything on my wall. That's old Nick. That's, I, old Nick would have put every Star Wars, it would have been, my ceiling would have been covered in Star Wars. Um, but the answer, uh, and we do have a winner. And I'm gonna email the winner back right now. I've just emailed the winner back. I know who it is. 
You know who it is. He knows who it is. Uh, did you just get an email back from me? Ray Buildable? Ray Buildable? 10. 10 the correct answer. 10, 10 is the correct answer. 10 the correct answer. In fact, there's one. Big Empire Strikes Back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Yeah, that's the Last Jedi soundtrack. Eight. Come over here. Nine. Star Wars Celebration. And then ten. That's the ten. That's the ten right there. Star Wars. Big print I got. Uh, I don't remember the artist, but it was like a vintage throwback looking Star Wars poster that I just, uh, I love the shit out of it. And a Millennium Falcon over there just for good measure, you know? 10. Proof that I have 10 Star Wars things hanging on my wall. If you would have asked me that if I was ever in my old office, it would have been up into the many double digits. Congratulations, Ray Buildable. Seamus, peace out. Have a good night. Congratulations, Ray Buildable. And that now officially, officially, officially brings us to the end of this here vlog. I'm going to take a quick look. Can I can't stop holding this little thing. Take a quick look, make sure I didn't forget anything. In fact, I'm going to put uh, Ray. Wrote Ray Buildable, fuck yeah, on the back. I'm going to put this with your prize in the corner. Congratulations. I hope you're a Star Wars fan, Ray. Hope you're a Star Wars fan, Ray Buildable, because you just won a super dope uh, Star Wars collectible. But if you were leaning on your wall, there would be 11 due to the Stormtrooper. You know what? I, I can't argue with that. I, I, I cannot argue with that. I wish I could. Cannot argue with that. All right. We got one last super chat here from uh, Osmo Fantic. Appreciate you, pimp. Uh, I was hoping to catch you at SWCA last year. SWCA. St SWCA? Star Wars Celebration? Is that what you're talking about? I don't know what SWCA is. Uh, it is, this tiny thing is the Caliburn, hang on. A, Z, uh, sorry, the Caliburn GZ2, GZ2, GZ2. The GZ2. I did say hanging. I did I did say hanging. I do have other Star Wars things. If you want to count every Star Wars thing in my room, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's probably 10 more over there, not including books. Probably 15 more over there. Oh yeah. I have the two bobbleheads. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six more bobbleheads up there. So I got I got some more Star Wars stuff that's not hanging on the walls. But, 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 I think that's it, you guys. I think we're done. I think we're done. Uh, Let's see. No, we're done. This has been a damn hell-ass good vlog. We, we, we'll definitely have a retro vaping next week. Definitely have a retro vaping next week because it got bumped this week and that's okay. And that's it. I'm going to peace out. It's 8.15. I got to wake up at the crack of dawn and drive up to Santa Rosa tomorrow. So I still have to pack. I still have to eat Taco Bell. Like there's a lot that's going to happen tonight. I'm going to try to make a, a shed time order before they close. I'm going to try to go. I'm definitely going to go hang out with the Yo Yo Cool Kids Club over there on discord um and that's it that's it you guys we're done 
We cranked through this vlog. I got a Boro. I got beer. I got Misfits beer. Yeah, this is a hell-ass good vlog. A damn hell-ass good vlog. Happy birthday to all the birthday people. Yeah, hell yeah. Happy birthday, Eli. Happy birthday, Lee. Happy birthday, TJ from Twitch, who will forever be TJ from Twitch. Uh, I love you guys. You know, I just do. And that's not something I just say. Uh, I mean it. And I think we need to say that more uh, in the world. Uh, instead of calling people names, we could just tell them that we love them. And then that completely catches somebody off guard. And then they, you know, you feel compelled to be like, well, I, I don't know how I feel about you back. Do I love you back? Oh, I love you back. All right. All you need is love. You know, George Harrison, he was on to something. Was that George or was that Paul? No Del Taco tonight, Cicero. We had the great Del Taco Taco Bell debate last, this last Wednesday. <laughs> uh, no Del Taco for me, but hey, um, one last time, I love you guys. Peace out. Be excellent to each other. Uh, the world is, is, is a difficult place enough on its own, and we don't need to be picking at each other. You know, we can just tell someone, hey, I love you, man. Thanks, man. I love you too. Let's keep that vibe going. Let's keep that energy going. I'm going to be up in Santa Rosa with Pops this weekend. I don't know if we're going to shoot any more video. We might make a brownie. We might make some cheese pie. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. So I love you guys. Peace out. Be excellent to each other. Uh, re remember that vaping is going to change the world. Um, and we got to help it. You know, we got to do our part. These, these products have changed our lives. This product has changed my life. This product saves lives. This product changes lives. And uh, harm reduction wins. Harm reduction wins. Um, earn for this comment is literally banned forever. For the rest of my life. You're gone, earn. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can have your own opinions outside of mine. Um, I don't have an outro anymore. So the new outro has become the Yawk song. So we're going to listen to my BFF, Omboy OC, uh, sing, sing to us with his soothing voice. And I'm going to say goodbye one last time, you guys. One last time. Big love to you. Be excellent to each other. Peace. I believe I could fly. I believe I could touch the sky. Any time of year. Dun, 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 dun. I believe I can fly.